welcome along and welcome back to Attingham Park. Today we are leaving this actually, doing some contracting. Uh, the sugar beet needs to all be done. We're already up to six or yeah, about 10% full. So this is going to keep us very busy today. However, we are also looking at doing our next round of selling off. So we've got the sorghum here and looking at the price of this, it's really interesting. I might see where we are in a little bit, to be honest. County stores is still on the way up. British grain is saying it's on the way down, but has hit the top price. Um, we're looking at a possible top price in January, but if we if we exceed that, uh, then we will probably do it now. In fact, yes, I think with that saying, with that hitting the top price, um, but county stores going up, what we're going to do is we'll keep going with the uh, sugar beet initially here, keep this going, and then uh, in a couple of hours, we will check on the price and see how much is going. In fact, I think the best thing for us to do right now is probably jump in our truck and get it filled up with the sorghum. That way, as soon as that top price hits, or as soon as that top price is exceeded, if it does, uh, then we can go and grab it and make sure we make the most of it. Uh, we are at 58,000 at the moment. Uh, we're looking at earning quite a bit. You can see in the rearview mirror the, um, uh, the uh, sugar beet harvester going there. There we are. This is going to take a few trips for us to do or oh, let's move a little bit further forward i think yeah about there will be good so yeah this will uh this will make us a lot of money we can take about thirty thousand liters in fact we can take exactly thirty thousand liters at a time so we'll park this here ready to go and i'm gonna jump into the john deere and the overloader so that when this comes down this side here and uh, approaches the bottom we can do this we're about halfway through the headlands on this contract uh it's got a uh yeah six headlands i think we set i uh, know we're, we're yeah we're more than halfway we're two thirds of the way through because this is the uh fourth headland uh, it's got six to make it easily turn um, at the sides as it's going through the lands. And that then will do uh, fairly nicely for us to unload this. We'll completely uh, unload the harvester and see where we are. Uh, if it's... Uh, I don't think actually it's going to be that full, interestingly enough. Right, let's reverse out of this. Yeah, only 37% off there. So, we we'll fill this up and uh, then we'll go and take the first load in our big man truck. I was going to use the man truck to do the sorghum. Um, and we might still actually, once we've got the first load off this. Uh, but, uh, initially we're going to use our own uh, lorry that we got on the farm to do it. With the amount of sorghum we've got on here, we're maybe expecting to hit 90 to 100,000 pounds off selling it off. Uh, if it, because we've got a really good bonus at the moment on the environment score. So that's, that's great. That will, uh, that will give us a massive uh, boost from that side of things. Uh, we also have a, uh, we also got this rising price. It's already gone over 900 um, at the one we're watching that's rising. And in fact, uh, even British Grain, where it was uh, saying that it was dropping, has gone up by a pound, is, is now above the uh, the maximum price. So keep an eye on that, seeing how things go. We are in for a very good amount of money, I think, off that sorghum. Uh, if we can keep an eye on it and sell at its peak. Um, it does seem to be getting there. And I'm not expecting the price to be high in January this year. I think we're going to continue. Uh, if we're hitting the high price now. Uh, yeah, I think January is going to be uh, very late for it to uh, hit the high price later. Doing lots of uh, fun here. Trying to get this to... Uh, to fill it up we've gone almost the whole way around the field which shows the difference that you get as you go round each 
uh, headland. We're on the fifth headland here, and uh, it's uh, it's not we've not had a full tank or a full trailer worth from since it started along this back edge here. So uh, yeah, we're definitely getting diminishing our returns on the headlands, which isn't surprising seeing as the headlands are getting smaller. And in fact, because this is having to go further around the field to get the same amount of crop, we're actually ending up with a, a bit of a slower bit of progress here now. So that's good. That is gonna feed into what we want to do today quite nicely. Let's top this off. I'm hoping coming around the corner here, uh, it's got enough just to top the top of this off. Because as it makes it round here, uh, we have the trailer sitting there uh, ready to go. In fact, yep, yeah, that is. So let's bring this out here and round. Try and position ourselves next to our lorry. I need to raise the top of that. Can I get it to do it? Yeah, there we go. So if I raise that right up to there, that should get over the edge of the, uh, the truck now. And I might have to just turn this round. Not going to reverse very easily. It tends to be the case with one of these uh, rear steering trailers. They can be a bit of a pain to turn or to reverse. Um, here, though, we're all right. And then... It far enough out. Oh, I'm still going to have to reverse it. But if I can get far enough away from the trailer, it will then just go over the top and unload into that. And while it's unloading, what I can do is go and check what's happening with uh, the price of our sorghum. So, yeah, you can see here the price for British grain is still rising, despite the fact that say it's coming down. Um, so that is now well above um, our expected high of 9.34. So let's go and let's go and tip this down at British Grain and then we'll see where the price is at that point. Um, but yeah, it looks like we might want the other truck down there as well. Before we continue, this video is brought to you in partnership with the awesome people at Apex Gaming PCs. I've teamed up with Apex Gaming PCs to create my own custom line of PCs suitable for everybody from beginner farmers to virtual farming experts. Apex Gaming PCs are offering up to $250 off your next purchase just by using my link in the description below. So go check them out. And the British grain, let's see if we can avoid hitting the trailer on the roof of this this time. Bring it round, pop out and yeah, straighten up a bit and we can back right into here. We'll try tipping about half of it first. That should avoid hitting the roof. Uh, bringing the uh, trailer back down and then doing it again. I think that... Let me just open it from here. Yeah, I'm not sure this trailer does. One of these trailers does have a belt on it. I don't think it's this one. Stop. Let it come down. And then tip the rest. Like that. And that should, with any luck, avoid hitting the roof. Yeah, this is not the one with the conveyor in the bottom. Uh, there is one of the trailers available, one of the cramped trailers available, that does have that and uh, and allows you to tip the um, uh, tip without lifting the trailer. Unfortunately, this is not one. Our harvester still needed unloading, though, before we got back to the field. It, it did an entire uh, round of the field, actually. Uh, got a uh, another headland. So the sixth headland did fill it up. And I'm fully expecting the harvester to accelerate at this point rather than stop, which would be more helpful. Uh, yep, yeah, there it goes. Foot on the pedal because it's about to do the lands. And I'm hoping that we are going to empty it before then. Yep, and we have. So uh, let's get the truck back here. And then we need to see how much sorghum we... Well, how much our sorghum can sell for. Pulling underneath and unloading into the trailer. 
Let's have a look. Sorghum, 935, 904, 930. I think we're going to drop one load into British grain at this 935 price simply because uh, that is a good price that is above the 934 we're heading for. And it means we should get it for uh, the best price we can, even if the price drops from this point. And because British grain is also where we're taking the sugar beet, a uh, perfect opportunity to kill two birds with one stone and uh, go and take this at the same time. Um, we've not got a full trailer. We are at 44,391. So 74% full. Uh, but it should be fine. That is going to work pretty well for us um and uh yeah our sugar beet harvester might be full by the time we get back uh but if we set this here in fact if i bring this round here i've already started up the fiat i should be able to align that put that on follow me like so do we have a yeah we have a driver perfect Right, and as this is the slower truck, uh, we can lead the way with this. And let's start selling the sorghum. With the sugar beet going down to British grain as well, it's actually a pretty good place for us to be selling our sorghum to. Um, it means that we can easily keep the sugar beet field working. We can take both these trucks down here at the same time to unload. And uh, yeah, basically means an entirely, uh, a, a, a pretty efficient way of running everything here. So let's uh, bring this to here. We'll stop the hired worker on here. So take you off. Uh, bring this then into here a little bit as well until we can get our other truck out of the way. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and uh, empty the harvester and this is where having the overloader for the sugar beet harvester for the sugar beet comes in really useful because i can keep the harvester moving we've got this up at the field all the time ready to empty uh while our lorry is away while our truck is away and uh, and we're able to basically just keep things moving a lot more smoothly than they would otherwise Coming to the end of the row and the harvester is empty. Our trailer isn't quite full, um, but it's full enough for us to uh, to get a decent load for our truck when it comes back. So uh, let's get this back up to the top end of the field. And uh, then we'll go and empty the two trucks and get them back to the farm so that we can uh, start the whole thing over again. So let's get this unloaded. Uh, Bring it around keep an eye in the uh oh in the rear view mirror here oh look at that right, we can go back in the gears and this one won't hit the roof part of the reason why i've got this truck tip it up there we go and how much are we selling this for we are 924 wow that's really dropped so we're now actually below best price. And this is what I always fear when seeing something hit, hitting best price and, and waiting a little bit. You end up with actually your, your best price dropping down a bit. Now it might be county stores is still on the way up and it might go higher than that. But even now we're higher at the old water mill than we are at British Grain. Um, we have made... 30,000 pounds on that though. So uh, it's not a bad amount of money and we're still going to make a huge amount from it. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, we are in a position where uh, we're not making quite as much as I was looking at making at the start of today. Um, and uh, hopefully the price will continue to rise at counter stores and uh, we might get that best price again. But as it stands at the moment, there's not a huge amount of point in uh, in selling at, uh, well, selling here. 
So everything's turned around and uh, not a massive point in selling here. Uh, I think we uh, we might have to change our plans a little bit. Or just keep a close eye on that price and see if anything changes. So getting this back up to the yard again, I'm going to refill with uh, more sorghum. Um, we do want to go and sell. I am, oh, I am definitely in two minds now about which way to go with this. But uh, we do want to fill this up. So we'll leave that filling. I'm going to turn the engine off. Uh, we can leave that there. This, though, uh, this needs to get back to the field and unload because our harvester is already ready to be refilled. I think the best choice I've got for this here is going to be to empty our overloader, go and refill the overloader up, and then refill this trailer. Let's get the pigs a little bit. They're fine. And uh, then uh, we will be able to get a full trailer of uh, sugar beet this time and get that delivered. So let's unload this. And then when the overloader is empty, we'll head down the field. We'll refill off the harvester. And uh, yeah, we should then have enough space in this overload to take a full second load off the harvester i think it's one of those things the days are short and the jobs are long and we need to get uh, we need to get the rest of this field knocked out it is i mean we are over halfway through this field and we are swiftly getting through the longer parts of it so uh, that's good news we're, we're we're doing okay today but it's um it's going to be a close one. It's not going to finish this contract today. Never really was expecting to, if I'm honest. Uh, we, we're always looking at uh, this contract going over two days, which is why I didn't take the potato contracts, because they would have been out of the harvesting window, whereas the sugar beet is in the harvesting window until this, the end of this month. So it's still very realistic. And yeah. We're going to get this harvester emptied, load up our truck, and uh, and get that down to unload it again. And the price of the sorghum is once again going up at British Grain. I, it's really, really weird what the price is doing. So, um, yeah, I think what we're going to do is uh, go back down there again. I think we're better off holding off on the price of sorghum today. We're going to have a good chance to sell tomorrow again. So, uh, yeah, the price is definitely going up again and we're below best price. So uh, we're chasing best price. Will we get it again? I honestly don't know. But we're back down at British Grain and lining ourselves up to get this load of sugar beet done. Sugar beet price must be fairly good at this time of year as well. It, it normally is. And uh, ideally, whatever excess, we kind of want to sell using this truck. Uh, so I'm hoping that's going to be the case. Let's back this up here. And we can have a look at this, actually, while we're doing this. Uh, let's just get this tipped mostly up there first. And before it hits the ceiling, bring it back down. We are 60% of the way through the contract and 47% transported. In fact, we are now 51% transported. Price of sugar beet at the moment um, is 267 is the best price. 262 is what's targeted so yeah at the moment we kind of want to get this contract finished because we want to be selling the excess sugar beet for the maximum profit we can as well this will likely be our last load for today i think i think what we'll do is go and empty the harvester one more time so we'll leave our man truck running here and go and empty the harvester. I think it's on the way back this way. 
Yep, in fact, just in time, the harvester needs unloading again. Uh, and it's down this end of the field. So that actually is a pretty good place to stop the harvester, I think. Let's get it unloading. And we'll get it to unfold its auger. And then jump out and just jump in here and stop it. There we go. Empty out what we've got in here into here. And then we'll unload as much of this as we can into the trailer. Uh, the rest can remain overnight in the, in this. And, uh, and we'll be good. But that is uh, a very nice load off of here. Another 40 odd thousand litres, I think it is. Yeah, 40,913. I'm liking this overloader setup with the harvester and everything. It is, uh, it is working very, very well for us. So let's turn the lights off as well. Back this off. Yeah. We are two-thirds of the way through this field. We'll be a little bit more once we have delivered this as well. Uh, we have been chasing the value of the uh, sorghum all day. And, yeah, didn't quite catch it at its best price. We can only hope that tomorrow it hits its best price again. Uh, that would be very nice. I'd, I'd want to maximize this. I wonder if we can get enough money... To be able to buy this field uh, before we finish the contract on here because I'd love to know what happens if you buy a field um, before a contract is ended and I might give that a quick experiment and sort of save the game and go from there so there we are that is that done and yeah I'm going to take this down to the um uh, down to the grain silo or the, the British grain and get this sold or get this delivered. Um, so we'll be ahead of 66% next time. We have a trailer full of sorghum and we're heading down to British grain because the price has reached a uh, whopping £944 per thousand litres. It's really, really dark though. Uh, being at 7 a.m. in December. So this is uh, well above the cap that we had. So £934 was the previous highest price that was reached last January. And uh, 944 is nice and high. It is showing that it's on the way down. So I'm trying to take early advantage of this. At the same time... Our sugar beet harvester is out and going again. We want to get that finished off today. So the plan is to end up with an awful lot of money at the end of the day. Uh, we've got 30,000 litres in this trailer, in this truck. Uh, we've got another 44,000 litres sitting in the uh, sitting in our uh, silos. So uh, we've got those to sell as well. We'll probably do, if the price holds, we will probably do the same thing as we've done uh, the last couple of videos and uh, get a convoy going with this. But while the harvester was filling, I just wanted to, to run down here in our truck and get this, uh, get this sold at this good price. I'm fully expecting, and we're going to check this before I actually sell, um, but I want to make sure that we are actually getting that price and it hasn't dropped in sort of the half hour below the uh, the maximum price um i'm not expecting it to we are pretty good from from that situation uh we we've, we've got a good amount of space looks like we're getting a, a bit of snow falling as well so uh it's going to be an interesting morning here in the attigan park so round and into british grain and we'll back it up and then we'll go check the price. Make sure that we are still getting a really, really good price. It's very possible the price of sorghum could still rise next month. Um, we are... It's one of those things where I've gambled on that before and got stung by it. So we'll get into position. There we go. And then have a look in here. So the price has actually gone up by a pound. 
and if we look at the price fluctuations 934 is the top price that was reached uh the previous january and current price is 945 so yeah i definitely want to be selling at this let's tip this and uh see how much we make and as it empties out 28,361 plus an extra 2,500 for the environmental score. That's a whopping 30,000. So yeah, that's that's about a thousand pound per thousand liters we're getting. In fact, it's over a thousand pound per thousand liters. So that's awesome. Uh, if we could make another 44,000 pounds off this, that would throw us over 150,000 just from the sorghum sales today that's fantastic that is definitely us buying field two today um which would be well we may not buy it today i think we will get everything sold we'll get ourselves set up with a ton of money and then in the new year we can start looking at uh, where we're going to expand the farm but i think field two is probably our best bet meanwhile our harvester is full so we'll head round there and get that emptied uh which will be great i mean that is uh, that is going to be brilliant we will get our first load in and it's finishing off the harvester's nearly finished off the longer parts of the field which is uh, even better means that we'll be able to uh, sort that out and get that all done I want to get this filled up and uh, and the harvester emptied with this. Uh, it will get most of a trailer doing that. I think that's loading up, isn't it? Yes, there we go. So this uh, yeah, this will get most of a trailer from this, but it's it's still going to be uh, a little bit empty. The harvester does not hold as much as this overloader does. So uh, I want to keep things moving as smoothly as I can. And we really want to try and send a full trailer. But you can see here that this is a um, <laughs> this is not a full trailer that we get off the harvester. So I'm going to go and empty this into our trailer. It's forty-five thousand. So we're aiming to grab another fifteen thousand, really, and uh, then that will give us a full trailer to take down to the uh down to british grain to sell and we can convoy with the soybeans oh uh, sorry gr uh, sorry gum sorry and uh and get that all done at once like we were trying to do last time so i've got my truck back now and we'll reload that so let's empty the sorghum out and where are you there you are so yeah forty-four thousand five hundred liters left uh, to go and uh, sell and we're nearly 80% done on the contract on field 2 as well uh, which is even better I'm looking to buy a field that I'm running a contract on which is really really interesting uh, I don't know if that's possible and I don't know what would happen if uh, you were to do it I might save the game uh, give it a test and then reload uh, just to see what happens because I think that would be very very interesting right our tractor is empty and refilling and looks like our harvester is cutting into a new run um, I have a feeling our harvester is actually getting low on fuel which uh, isn't great oh I'm gonna have to go all the way around I think because otherwise uh, yeah that's not gonna work there we go coming from this angle and we should be able to empty this we only need fifteen thousand liters so uh let's grab that and it won't take very long for this trailer to get fifteen thousand liters in it 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 there we go so that's all we need to grab we could have emptied the harvester i suppose but i want to get the truck off as quickly as i can and uh, the easy way to do that is just grab the, the top up and go from there we'll have to empty the harvester out anyway and whether that is sitting in this or sitting in the harvester is, is neither here nor there really 
So I bring this, try not to hit the trailer. Oh, yeah, overloading into this, this fairly high trailer is not the easiest of things. But that will give us the last 15,000 litres we need to top this trailer off. And once we've done that, uh, we'll be in a position where we can take all of this and head down to British Grain and uh, and get it all sold off. So I'm going to go and pick up my truck, uh, which has a whole load of sorghum in it. And uh, we'll go and get this all uh, delivered. We're back down to British Grain and the snow is beginning to settle here now. Uh, it's really, really Christmassy, actually. We're, we're late December. We've got snow on the ground. Uh, what more could you ask for other than this being my New Year's Day video? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Timing is not, uh, not a great thing. However, timing for us to sell is absolutely brilliant. We currently have a uh, one no, sorry 947 price so although the fact that this is showing it going down it's actually still going up and we're still making more money for every sorghum uh we are uh, or every trailer full of sorghum we're selling uh which is brilliant now i'm not willing to gamble too much i've got a best price i've got a price that is way above my best price so uh, I am uh, very, very happy to be selling this at this point. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to make over 30000 for this again. And there we go. 28426 uh, plus about 2500 on the environmental score again. So about 31000 for the sorghum. Uh, we are now up to 145,000. Uh, and I think we could actually, with that, buy field two. Uh, so we might go and try and do that. First, though, uh, we've got to get the sugar beet here dropped off. And I need to go and sort the harvester out. Uh, I think my harvester is blocked by... Oh, my harvester is just blocked by the uh, hedgerow here. But... Uh, as you can see, we are massively low on fuel. We need to go and refill this quickly. So we'll take this round to the yard. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go and empty it into the overloader. Take it round to the yard. Refill it. I don't know if we have any DEF kicking around here. So I might have to pop to the shop quickly and grab some of that. Not a huge problem. We can get this running still with the, the small amount of DEF it has left. Um, but uh, what I could also do... Oh, no, don't want to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, what I could also do is um, pop to the shop quickly and grab some of that to go and get this refilled. There's always one spanner in the works, one way or the other, that, uh, that can cause us to get delayed on a job. And uh, yeah, today it is that the harvester needs refueling. So we should be able to get a small thing of DEF from here. I'll plonk it in the back of the Land Rover and we can uh, take it back down the field. So because we're using the DEF mod, it is located here. I don't need a massive one. So it's only going to be 58,000 for the uh, 25 litre capacity. There we go. And we're not going to need more than that. If we needed more than that, we'd have a problem. So what I'll do is we'll stick this in the back of the landy. And then we'll head back down to the field and go and get it uh, refilled on the harvester. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it back to the uh, fuel refill point and get it done there. And that way we can fill both of them at the same time. I won't have to take the DEF anywhere else. So let's get our harvester refueled. We'll bring it in here. I've got the DEF sitting at the back of my landy. So we'll do that first and get that refueling. So put that there and refuel. Yep, and that's the DEF started. And then we will uh, get the re 
No, I don't want to refuel my little Ford. I want to refuel this. There we go. And we got 3,000 litres in our diesel tank. So uh, we're all good. And that, I think, will do it. Uh, I don't want to put too much in. I don't mind putting all of the AdBlue in, uh, if we can, because oh, that takes forever to reload. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to... I wanna, put all of that in because we don't need to but we don't need to fully refuel this um because uh we will end up returning it with a load of fuel in if we do so while that's doing that i'm gonna get the sugar beet tipped and uh we'll see how far this takes us um we yeah once it's refueled i think what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the game and do that experiment we're gonna see if we are able to buy a field that we are running a contract on and see if it makes any difference see if the contract goes to us uh which would be an interesting thing bring that forward 73 percent oh wow okay and try again try not to hit the roof of the uh shed which we've managed this time we are three quarters of the way there for our uh, contract so that's really good let's get these back up to the field by then the def should be loaded into the harvester and uh we can get uh we can get the last load of a sorghum transported as well so i've sold the remaining sorghum we are at a hundred and sixty thousand one hundred and fifty seven unfortunately i missed it because i muted my mic to uh to have a uh, to clear my throat a bit and uh, and it didn't go um so uh yeah we are at 160,000, which is fantastic uh, that is enough to buy field two. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and give this a test and uh, and see what happens if we do get a contract or we do buy a field from out under a contract. So let's join the harvester here. The harvester is going and let's pop over here. I have saved the game. Let's come here to field two and but 123 percent buy it yes i would how much oh <laughs> yeah so the harvest has disappeared uh looks like the contract might have completely disappeared so no penalty because we bought the contract from underneath uh no extra money for everything we've delivered as part of this contract just yeah, left us with a field of sugar beet we can't harvest. So, uh, yeah, I think I need to reset it and we'll come back and, uh, and we'll continue and we'll get this contract completed because, uh, yeah, we've got to get all this sugar beet lifted then before we can buy field two. So let's set our harvester going again. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep on going and complete this contract. In fact, to make sure we have enough daylight to do this, I'm going to turn the speed down to five times. We want to get this contract knocked out today and done and dusted. Coming up to, well, we're over 90% of the way through the contract. Uh, I think this might be the final row that this has to do for this cutting. Uh, I think we're maybe two or... Yeah, I think we're two, possibly three cuttings from finishing the field. So, uh, all in all, we're in a good place. I've got this all angled properly. Yeah, so that's good. I uh, just need to unload this and keep this going at this point. I'm not going to use my uh, my other truck to cart any of the sugar beets, um, mainly because it's leased, and I don't want to put any more leasing hours and cost us extra uh, money for that. I don't need to completely fill this up. Uh, what we want to do is um, just make sure that uh, we have enough to fill this trailer. And this trailer is partly filled in the first place. So uh, we are all good. And, oh man, we have enough money to buy field two. And that is fantastic. And the beauty is that this contract is going to give us a whole load of extra money uh, to do more stuff this year on the farm. 
which makes me even happier. Um, that is, uh, you know, fantastic news for us to uh, to really push the farm this year by having uh, all this extra stuff. So another load down to British Grain, and there's snow blocking the uh, cell point. But that's all right. They'll take it anyway. It'll clear the way. Uh, and, um, yeah, this uh, should put us fairly close to finishing this contract. In fact, I'm kind of wondering how much more we need to deliver to finish this contract. Let's just have a look in here before we tip it. And we've got uh, details on. Uh, we need to deliver 125,300. We have nearly 60,000 here. So this load and another load uh, will just about do this. So what we need to then check is the price of sugar beet. Uh, topping out at 273 at British Grain and Sugar Shack. And best price is 264. Yeah, we want to be selling this to British Grain as long as that price holds. So uh, that is really good. I would uh, very, very much like to be able to tip the last couple of loads that will get off the field into here and get the maximum price we can for this. But I think one more trailer should complete what we need to do to complete this contract whoa little bit more little bit more and there we go so 86 percent transported one more load should do this and then everything after that is pure profit as well uh which will probably add another 10 to 20 grand on top uh because we're running at best price too so, uh, yeah, this is going to be a very, very good day. I think we we have a possibility of ending up somewhere in the region of 200,000 uh, to set the farm up for the next year, which is great because we're going to need some money to set up field two uh, in January and February before seeding or oh, the seeding windows reopen in March. Harvester needs unloading again, and we are definitely into the final sections of this field. Oh, in fact, it, it got full during the cutting, which is interesting. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to back this out of here a little bit. It's very close, uh, but we're good. We're all fine. And, yeah, we'll unload this. Uh, we should have enough here. Uh, if this hits 90% to do a full trailer, uh, which would be fantastic. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be the last of the sugar beet. We need to complete this contract at this point, which would make the rest of what we have on this field, these last few strips, pure profit for us. Ah, oh, in fact, it's not quite. We are at 82%. And I'm going to have to follow the harvester out of here. 41,000 plus 18. Oh, actually, this might be enough. This might be enough to complete this contract. I have got a very small window, though, to get out of the end of here. Like so. There we go. And yeah, this may be 59,000, which would be enough to complete this contract. And, uh, and then the rest is pure profit. And we just need to get it off the field. And down to British Grain. Because it is best price today as well. So that's the thing. Uh, will this fill this trailer? I'm hoping so. I'm just trying to evenly spread it along the trailer. Make sure that we have a good coverage. All the way along it. And yes. 2%. We have 2% left in the overloader and a full trailer. This is going to do it. This is going to complete this contract. And everything after this is pure profit for us. So let's get this tipped. And in. There we go. And back it up. Is this going to be enough to complete this contract? Let's find out. Tip it up. Oh, no, not quite far enough back there. This is the job. This is why we hit the roof. 
I wondered if I backed it further in, actually, I might be better off. But that there is 92% transported with 44% left to come out of here. And is it going to be enough? There we go. Contract is finished. We are now making profit. Uh, that is 2,197 uh, plus the 195 environmental score. Let's go get the last of our sugar beets off this field. And uh, yeah, make even more money. We are at 162,196 at this point. And as we get back to the field, the harvester is once again ready to be unloaded. And in fact, with the little amount of sugar beet left on this field, I reckon all of this is going to fit in our trailer for one last sell-off. So let's jump in the John Deere here, get this emptied. And yeah, I think all of this should fit in the harvester. It's really interesting with the snow falling uh, and the cloud cover. It's got quite dark here at uh, 25 past uh, four. Uh, but we should be in a position where this is this is the last of it. We can finish off, empty the rest of this uh, into our trailer and uh, and go and sell it off and it'll be uh, it, it should be fantastic anything we have over what I will probably do is actually stick it into our regular truck just so that we can get all of it down and sold off at once uh, so this should give me 85% that's fine uh, we'll let the harvester finish off the field and I will go and tip this into the trailer. Final row for the sugar beet harvester and there's only about 5,000 litres in there. So I'm just going to shadow it the whole way along here and we can then immediately go and just empty into the harvester i'm not worried about the few small patches that the harvesters missed uh in a couple of places around the field we've we've done really well in uh in gathering the vast majority of this field up and uh and and making a really decent profit off of it Thirty thousand liters we're not we're gonna hit about maybe seventy five thousand one hundred and seventy five thousand pounds off here uh, which is going to be perfect for what we need. There we go. Harvester is finished. Uh, we are just going to take this and empty out into our truck. Uh, there we go. Round. And I want to line this up and not hit it. I've spent so much time clobbering this on the side of this high side of truck. Uh, 10,000 litres, so this isn't going to be a full trailer. We're going to have about 53,000 litres excess to sell. So it's about a full trailer's worth excess we've had, given what we had last time. And that's this trailer empty, so we will fold that in as well. And once that's folded in, we can turn this off. And time to head down and sell off the final little bit of sugar beet. And uh, yeah, finish making our money for the day. And after offering a best or after taking in all of that sugar beet from the contract, uh, British Grain actually is no longer the best price for sugar beet. Uh, we're looking for the sugar shack, which is down here somewhere in this maze uh there it is that's it there let's not hit that uh hole and bring this round here yeah that's the sugar shack in there so we should be able to bring this round and into there and get this sold here uh which will be fantastic getting in there uh, just an extra pay it's only an extra pound but considering how little sugar beach sells for uh it's about a third of a percent better if we sell here at the sugar shack um which again by volume is quite a lot of money so let's bring this down into here 
we will just double check this before we end. Yes, yeah, so Sugar Shack, £274 compared to 273 So it's a little bit more than a third of a percent that we'll get from here. And we can sell here and make a ton of money. We're going to hit the 180. I'm not sure we're going to hit 180. We are definitely hitting 175 though. And yeah, the extra 1,311 from the environmental score too. That is brilliant. So 178,000 is what we've hit. We still need to complete our contract, which is another 29,000. We are going to make the 200,000. Let's collect it. And there we go. 205,954. Uh, that is utterly fantastic. So uh, we're going to leave it here down at the Sugar Shack. I will head back to the farm in a moment. The time has come. We're standing out here by field two, uh, which we finished harvesting with the sugar beet last time. We have 203 thousand in the bank and that is more than enough to buy it there is a cultivating contract on it at the moment for nine thousand but i don't want to cultivate it um what we want to do is probably mulch it or plow it depending or both uh depending on what needs doing so let's purchase this then so look at that expected yield bonus 123 percent it is almost all uh uh, all loam this is just such a great field so let's buy it yes and uh, we still have forty-seven thousand in the bank which is amazing right what is the condition of this field do we need to do anything to it before we get it scanned uh let's have a look uh, does it need plowing no it doesn't it does have some small and some medium stones on it so there is a stone problem on here that won't completely get rolled in, unfortunately. Um, but it doesn't look like a massive stone problem, so we may not worry about that now. Uh, we've what we do need to do though is uh get it mulched because none of this field is mulched. I think it is still harvested. Uh yes, it's still harvested. So let's go and get our mulcher and you know what? I know I don't want to do that. I want to divide the field first. So we'll uh, we'll get the uh, stuff out and get this divided first. So if we go into here and uh, <laughs> if if we did need to plow it, there's a subsoiler available, which would have been perfect. But we don't need to plow it, so we don't need the subsoiler. Uh, right. So my thought is that we're going to divide this field into three. We're going to go uh, firstly out from here and straight across uh, to divide it down the middle and create a bigger patch. And then we've got this tree. Yeah, I think this tree about here-ish. If I turn around here is where we'll divide the rest of it on. And uh, yeah, try and get it going out straight across here to uh about there-ish uh and that will give us that will give us three decent sized fields out of here so uh let's get the first one landscaping uh we want to paint uh we want a uh, forest ground grass i think like that and the way i'm going to do it is to uh change the shape of that and then enlarge it as well like so um and do i want it that size or that size i think we'll go slightly larger size on this and try and get uh, try and get that line going straight across there that is pretty good so then you just go straight across the field like that and yep yeah, that's uh that's a pretty good uh one there and then I'm going to come across here and yeah, we'll divide it at this point here. That actually might create quite a small field there. Let's have a look at this. Do I want to create it here? 
or I think we probably want to go across about here. So let's let's get out of here and have a look at this map. So ideally, yeah, I think we want to be about here-ish. So let's mark that with us, which I, yeah, I think is about there. No, further along. Uh, about here. Right between those two. Yes, that is roughly where we want to be uh, to divide these remaining two fields. They'll be slightly smaller than the big field at the top. But I have an idea on that as to exactly what we're going to do. So back into our construction and our landscaping. I am standing there. So painting wise... Uh, Enlarge that. Oh, let's get the right one first. That one. And enlarge that. So, wherever I am, we, there. We want this out here and that across there. Switch it to the circular one. And then out across there like that. And actually, that is not the size I want. Wow. What is going on there? Okay. I take it slower across this time. It seems to have been going across the field. This is going to be a little bit more wonky than the other because it moved a little too fast. That should get it, though. Yeah. How's that? A uh, little bit of weirdness down this edge. And we may have to, yeah, I may have to hire a plow to sort this. Um, but in general, that's okay. That's all good. Right. So now that we've done this, uh, I'm going to see if we can get the mulcher out on here and, uh, and actually mulch these fields. And to do that, we're going to use our county because that's the uh, tractor we've tended to be using for this job. Still has its awful turning circle, but, uh, should work fairly fine. It's a little bit of an odd job to be doing in uh, in January with the load of snow on the ground, but I I think it's all right. We're just getting stuff off the surface. Oh, we have got the rollers in the way of the mulcher though, because I was expecting to be using the roller now before the mulcher. So uh, we'll move that out of the way. Uh, we've got our lime spreader there as well, uh, but we won't know that until we've actually got these fields um uh, and so we've actually got these fields nicely uh scanned so we're gonna get the agronomist in and we'll uh we'll get them to uh to scan the fields as we have done on this field in uh, as we've done on this series we're not using the small uh soil sampler ourselves at all just put this over here. We are going to need the weeder, but not for a little while. But we're going to sell the weeder in the short air uh, in the near future, um, because if we discovered we need a hoe really on this farm instead of a weeder. So yeah, that's going to go in the near future. And I have actually got a new set of uh, weeder, uh, or oh, sorry, hoe mods that we'll be able to use. So that should work out fairly well. Back this into here. Hook this up. And away we go out to our fields. So we've got a couple of months, really, to get these fields sorted. Uh, I'm going to probably jump ahead at the point where we're ready to start seeding again. So if we can get this sorted today, that would be great. Let's unfold the mulcher and see if this actually works on here. Line it up. Don't know if you can mulch. Uh, oh, no. Is that mulching it? That appears to be mulching it. Yes. Oh, and we need to be right up to the edge. But yeah, that is mulching it. Fantastic. And drop the gears down a little bit and along the side of the field we go but this is going to help us no end in getting the maximum out of this field uh going forwards and uh, and going into next year
Ah. Now there's a small issue. We've uh, we've had a load of snow come down onto the ground. I cannot see where we need to mulch. And I think we might have to stop doing this job at this point. Uh, in order... Well, simply because I can't see what I'm doing and it is all under a whole pile of snow. Uh, probably not the greatest thing we could have been doing anyway, but really, really annoying that uh, I'm unable to continue that. So... Let's just uh, park this up in the shed, I think. Uh, we'll leave the mulcher on it because that is the first thing we're going to be doing uh, next time. Well, as soon as the snow melts. Uh, what we can do, though, is we can go and get uh, this field scanned by uh, the agronomist. He can, he can dig under the snow and get some of the soil up. So uh, let's go do that. And yeah, you can see where we've uh, where we've been doing that up the top. These are actually three reasonably similar sized fields, which is which is quite good. So let's click on that area there. We are going to have to purchase the soil information because uh, the way we're running this series, we can't scan it ourselves. So let's scan that. Uh, it's going to cost us 10,000 to do it. That's fine. Uh, that's kind of what we expected. And look at that. Uh, loam, loam, and loam with a little bit of silty clay in it. 14 is going to be fairly horrible of a field then, I think, uh, if we look to buy that at some point. Yeah. So, uh, field two is just a really good field. Um, and absolutely the next place we needed to look at uh, expanding into so um our it has dragged our uh environmental score down because obviously it does need a load of work um how are we sitting for everything else so we have some pretty poor ph across it so it is going to need liming and uh from a nitrogen point of view, well, everything from a nitrogen point of view is pretty bad at the moment. So, uh, oh, we're going to need to rescan here. Look at all of that outdated data sitting uh, sitting down the side of that field there. That is, uh, well, we're not we're not using it for the uh, the automated stuff, but yeah, our, our nitrogen levels and everything are horrible on there. Um, and then we've got these big patches of outdated data um that's that's horrible we can't rescan that area at the moment uh and then yield we have uh no idea on the yield at the moment because obviously we haven't actually harvested anything on there uh and seed rates we don't have any seed rates for field two interestingly oh that's because we haven't uh that's because we haven't tried seeding them yet so yeah we didn't need to do the standard in the middle of there so let's um yeah i think that might be it for uh today on the farm i'm gonna head back to uh the hotel and maybe in the morning uh we'll have better chance with less snow on the ground well it's the next day and if anything the snow has actually got worse here on the farm uh, this is this is not good. It's got deeper. It's still snowing, and yeah, there is there is absolutely nothing I can do. I am wondering, is there anything that we need to do on the farm? Otherwise, I don't think there is. I think we have sold off all of the crops that we were planning to sell. In fact, I don't think we have any crops left in our silos at all. Uh, let's have a quick look. Yep, no, silo is completely empty. So uh, for the second day in a row, we are snowed in. Uh, we cannot do anything. Well, it's uh, 10.30 on the first day of February. And finally, all of the snow has melted. So we're going to jump back out. Oh, not into our Ford, but into our county. Uh, jump out into this and go and set this up on the field, I think. 
uh, getting stuff done. We need to uh, get all of these three fields now uh, completely uh, mulched and limed ready for planting. Well, we just need to get one of them actually. And looking at where we've already seeded on here, uh, we seeded field three and we seeded 12B. And those two are both seeded with wheat. So ideally, I want to get some spring wheat into this top field here to offset the fact that field three is slightly smaller than our other fields on the farm. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pair this one with field three. So we need to get this mulched and limed uh, before we can uh, before we can get it seeded. So let's get this lime. Uh, let's get this mulched, um, and then we're looking to get our other fields uh, similarly sorted fairly quickly. I'm hoping I can lime on top of the mulching. That should be okay. Uh, we really, really need to, to be able to do that. Though. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, crack on with this. Uh, we'll get this done. And uh, then I can start looking at possibly sorting out some course play courses across these feed three fields uh, in order to do the mulching at the same time as we're getting lime in on this field here. So I'm going to leave this tractor now uh, mulching this field. We'll put a hired worker on it. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to head back to our shed. And I want to go and grab the 70, uh, sorry, the 8340 here. Uh, and we're going to head down to the shop. And uh, I think we'll go grab a plow, just a really small plow. Don't need anything particularly big. Uh why aren't you going into gear? Go into gear, please. There we go. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to go and grab a really small plow and go and get uh, that field sorted at the edges. Uh, just fix the mistakes that we had. Um, not a massive amount of plowing that I want to do, but just enough to do that. Uh, we've got our greenhouses are nicely covered with the cold weather we've had recently. So uh, those are good to see. And uh, they're still producing stuff, so we need to we need to make sure that they stay supplied. The pigs are doing okay at the moment, which is good. Um, we basically maxed out their food at the end of the year, so uh, they're running fairly nicely. And in here, we just want the smallest plow we can get, just something that's maybe a meter or so in width. So what have they got in here? Plows uh that would do it or wow that really would do it um what is the width on that half a meter half a meter may be all we need actually attach a type big attach type small attach type big uh yeah so this is basically just doing edging and it's so cheap i'm gonna buy it we're not looking at doing whole fields with this just looking at doing edgings and cleaning up and uh and sort of you know, doing bits around the sides of a field. It's a tiny little plow, this. Wow. Look at that. That is just dinky. On the back of this 7840, that is insanely dinky. But then it's only a half meter plow. So what am I going to do with this little plow? We're going to go and do along the edge of that field there. You can see there's sort of a half meter where it's really messed up. And, uh, and and really uh, looking really, really horrible. So I want to go up to that. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go along here and just clean this up. Uh, half meter should do it. If it doesn't, uh, then uh, we can easily come back on ourselves. Create fields is on. Yeah. Down. And just try and drive along here as straight as we possibly can yeah it is going to require um us to uh, to do a couple of goes with this but that's fine we'll just uh, clear this up and uh, and then make the field look a little bit better don't mind if the uh, the line isn't perfect uh, i just don't want all these ridges going across the field uh, it just looks pretty awful 
There we go. So that fixes that bit. And then we've got another little bit just along here. So down and there. And then the other side doesn't look to have fared quite so badly. I think that's because I went back over it a bit and uh, and redid it. So, uh, yeah, it's not looking too bad. We are pulling up now a couple of big patches of rocks, though. So we may have to destone these fields before we continue, even though there's not that many big stones on here. A lot of it is just smaller stuff. Um, but yeah, that will do. It's a little bit of a messy edge, but it's good enough. Uh, we also need to create an entrance for this field here. So I'm going to say the one that's being worked on at the moment by the mulcher, that is field 2A. Uh, 2B will be the one closer to the farm, and 2C will be this one here. Now there should be somewhere... Can we put... Ah, I think we might be able to put a gateway in at the top here. How wide is this gap? So there's a few gaps in the hedges here. That There's a gap there. There's not a gap here. We've got a fence along this bit. And then, is there a gap here? And there is, but it's got this in, in the middle of it. Yeah, the fence is basically broken here, but I've got no way. Don't think I've got a way of removing them. Let's have a look in here. See if they will delete. I don't think they will. Uh, no. So they they won't delete there. Our best bet, by the looks of it, is going to be... Yeah, this bit here. Unless there's another gap up here somewhere. I don't think there is, no. So it's either that... So either we go through this smaller gap here, which I think is going to be trouble for combines later on, Oh, actually, no. Nice big gap here. Let's do that. Right, so painting. Um, I want uh, just dirt. I want it changed to a circle. And then fairly large. Coming off here into the corner here. There we go. Uh, good entrance into this field here. It's an exit for the other field as well. But to be perfectly honest, I'm going to use it mainly for this. So, and fit that right up in the corner. There we go. Perfect. Let's get the tractor back and have a look at that. Yeah, I think that works. As a, an entrance into that field, that's pretty perfect. Uh, I could extend it the other side, but you can see basically what the same thing going on there. And uh, and the same thing in the corner over here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that as it is. And uh, that is pretty perfect. And then we've got this little plow here, should we want to make any adjustments later. And with that sorted, uh, this tractor is actually coming to the end of field 2a which is uh, fantastic timing i'm just looking at the um the stones on here yeah i think we're gonna have to ignore the medium stones for this year uh maybe get a stone picker on here next year one of those things where well, i don't know if we run we run a stone picker over the over the top of this whether that will cause an issue uh for our mulcher or not or whether um yeah whether it will cause an issue further down the line we could give it a try i'm i'm tempted to give it a try uh we've not got any use for any of the stones and we have run stone pickers on here before i kind of want to look after my uh, after my equipment so yeah uh we've got the money we will go and lease a stone picker and uh, and run it over to a here and then when we've done that, uh, we'll be able to go and um, uh, we'll be able to, to sort out uh, the lime on here as well. Um, but this is all mulched and looking good. So I'm quite happy with this. I might get this running 
on 2B then with a hired worker and see if see how we do with that uh, while on here yep we need to go and find a stone picker and uh, and get these stones picked off here if I was to run the stone picker on the harvested stuff we would never be able to mulch it so uh, it is important for us to mulch it first I think if we try and do it then limed, we're not going to see the stones. It's going to be much, much harder. So, uh, yeah, there is a definite order to getting this done. And uh, I think we're approaching it the right way. Uh, time to find out while uh, I set this off going this way. So I was about to get the stone picker with the 8340, but it looks like our lizard is actually having, or this tractor is actually having a problem on this field with the uh with the shape of it and with the hedges and everything so it's time to go and define a course play area so come into here draw custom field uh we'll do all three fields while we're here so one there two there there Thankfully, these, while not square, are fairly straight-edged fields. So, save that. Uh, yes. Um, let's select that. Rename it. So, this is 2A. Like that. And then I want to edit it. And go round. So uh, I will now go round. Uh, we'll select all of these points, get them in the right place, and uh, and we can go from there. Bit wonky in a couple of places, but otherwise uh, I think all of these are in roughly the right spots. So uh, I'm happy with that. Let's uh, escape back out of here then. Um, and then we need to do our second field. So uh, draw custom field. Uh, I think roughly there, the first one, uh, there, 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 uh, there, although that's going to take some curving, and there, uh, save that, yes, select it, uh, rename it to 2B, okay, and edit this. And, oh, not far off. Uh, um, that actually was better than I expected. Right, let's do this one now. And hook the corners up. And away we go. Almost done for 2B. And I love how adjustable uh, this all is. And, uh, yeah, how, how easy it is to, uh, to do this in FS22 uh, with this version of course play. Should be able now to uh, go down to the bottom corner. Uh, we'll set it to do a fairly big headland for this, I think. Um, because, as I said before, the turning circle on this tractor is awful. Um, but we should be able to now get it to, uh, to do this. Uh, let's go three headlands with this. And that should give it enough space to turn around. So into this corner here. This is where we want it to finish. Uh, there we go. Right, hired worker, uh, create job, course play field work. Target position is there. Target field is there. Uh, we want to open course generator. Three headlands as we normally get with this tractor. Uh, generate me a course. There we go. Nice and quick. And we're up that top end there for a tiny start. And it uh, should work out fairly well for us. So first waypoint. Show me the start point. And like that, we have another course plate course. Or another course plate setup generated. Uh, one more to go. And uh, then we'll go and get the destoner and get working on 2A. And there we go. That is field uh, 2C done. Does it give me, doesn't give me, I don't think. 
the actual size of these uh, fields. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. So 2A at the end is 1.83 acres, uh, 1.6 acres, and 1.87 acres. So 2C is actually the biggest of the three fields. Uh, 0.98. So how do these compare? 2.62. 2.94 and 2.76 wow so yeah there is um it's pretty cool that we can see the rough field sizes uh this could have gone further over um that way but uh yeah i'm quite happy with that uh how big is this 2.54 is that our biggest field how much was this oh no 3.76 no our biggest field is 12c Really, that should have been prepared, should have been paired with field three. But never mind. Uh, we can just uh, leave these going now. And yeah, I am. I'm actually going to stop this for the moment. There is a quick job we need to go and do with this. Otherwise, next time we're going to find ourselves uh, in a position where we can't do the job we want to do over on this bit here before i set the hired worker off i left a load of headland at the top end of this field and we just need to cover that i think i'm i'm happy with where 12c is and the size of 12c uh the thing we've got with it is we needed to put the entrance in somewhere and where we've broken the field and actually um Put the uh, put the connecting piece across uh, works well for us. Uh, whereas had it been made smaller and field uh, to be bigger, uh, we would have found that uh, it would have been a lot more difficult to put the entrance to uh, to C in, and we'd we'd have found ourselves compromising a bit of to be uh, to to get that field in there anyway. However, that's all good. Let's see if we can get this finishing off with this. I think we're probably going to be better off picking up next time with the destoner. And so that will be uh, the first thing we do. It is coming up to 20 to 5. Today, we are going to be continuing to get field two ready. We want to get field two A in particular ready for uh, planting tomorrow. So next game day, we're looking to, to get the spring wheat into that to match it up with our other wheat fields. So we're going to connect this up. Um, and yet yeah, to do that, what we're going to need to do is uh, get some lime spread on it. If we have a look in here and have a look at the pH levels of our fields, you can see the difference between field two, all of field two, and uh, all of our other fields. So we're, go we're going to be doing uh, the uh, pH and getting some lime on the field. I've already got my uh, little Ford uh, Zebra and my uh, 50, uh, 5640, I think this is. Um, list um lined up uh, it's got a thousand liters of lime in this bag i'm hoping this is going to go fairly far certainly i think this holds um about yeah in fact that holds more than a thousand liters so let's uh get the rest of this in uh we may have to pop up to the shop and grab some more uh which is not a huge problem but uh yeah we, we might need to we'll see how far this goes field two is fairly big and we do need to do the whole field we don't necessarily need to do the whole field today though so yeah there we go yeah i think that holds two thousand liters maybe let's turn this off leave that here and 1650 liters of lime in this now this is not an easy way to lime fields this is not a massive lime spreader and uh and it does mean uh, that we end up with uh, quite a few trips back and forth, which is why I'm thinking we don't have enough lime on the farm at the moment. I was thinking of uh, putting in a, a lime um, silo of some description, but we only really do lime once a year, maybe. 
Uh, or once every three years, sorry. So it's not actually that worth it. Right, pH level is fairly low. Uh, we are not, so we want to get our application rate up. Yeah, we're looking at doing about that kind of level. Uh, we'll see how we go across the field. We're going to keep a close eye on this. So it's K and M to alter that. Turn it on. And away we go. And try and get a good covering of lime all the way across this field. There's not a huge amount of variability on this field, thankfully. Um, we're, most of our fields, we've been lucky on this map, have been ones that are, uh, are single soiled. The only one where we've got any kind of issue really with the soil type uh, has been field three. And turn it, oh wow, really? Yeah, we do not have enough lime. That is a single set of lime has got us that far on this field. Uh, I think we're going to need to do something about this. So I've probably got enough lime to do one, maybe two more runs across the field. Uh, how much have we got in here? 1,100 in here. So yeah, we're going to use this and we're going to use bit of the next bag. I think we might have to put our New Holland trailer onto the back of this tractor and pop up to the shop or maybe on the back of another tractor because it doesn't connect very well to this weight let's see there we go uh, back it off and it will take another bit of lime from here oh i'm yeah that has used um, far more lime than i was expecting it to and to do the whole of that field is going to be a massive amount uh we are we are looking at bags and bags and bags of it and that has filled it up how much you've got left 1500 so yeah we've got one more load of lime left here really and then we're gonna have to go down to the shop so we've got uh one more row i think and then uh we're gonna need to to do this or we'll go and get a load of lime from the shop we might actually uh um, actually, we've got the uh, seven, uh, 8340 is sitting there in the shed. So what I can do is I can go and use that with the trailer. Uh, pop that down to the shop. We'll leave this at the field. And, uh, yeah, we can then load up at the field and, uh, and, and get things moving a little. So we might even need to use the larger trailer, although that does still have a whole load of... Uh, bale, straw bale sitting on it. So, uh, opens here. I might alternatively uh, just go and do uh, go and get a um, put a, a lime uh, purchase point in. I don't normally like doing that, but uh, so much easier to handle when we've got a lot of lime to deal with like we have on this field here. And, well, that took us uh fairly well across there but uh nowhere near enough to get the rest of this field done wow and this is just this field that we need to get covered uh let alone uh 2b and 2c as well and we're out of lime again like time to go and get the last load and uh, then we're gonna need to make a decision if I could get all three of these fields ready today, that would give us a nice boost. We'd then be in a position where we didn't have to worry about anything beyond that. And in fact, we want to be getting into our fields or planting our fields next month. Uh, I think it is not just... Uh, the spring wheat has to go in in March, so we've got to get that in. Um, our canola that needs to go in next month, and then we've got our sorghum that will go in in April. So uh, yeah, we've we've got some leeway. Uh, we've completely finished what we have in this shed, so we'll turn that off. And yeah, I think we might drop the weight off the back of that and get it up to the field. 
Although, yeah, the AT340, you could just see it hiding in the back of the main shed there. On the plus side, it looks like we're going to get a lower amount of pH on other parts of this field. I don't want to... Uh, yeah, I'd rather use less than use more. Right, there we go. And start from here. And we'll drop it down slightly. If we can use less, we will. And it might be a case of that's what we do across the rest of this field. Just to try and even things out a little bit. And, uh, and make everything go a little bit further. There we are. That's got most of that. What application rate do you want here? We're still on one. And then in a bit, I think we can adjust it down. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Because it definitely wanted less midway through this field. And we've run out before that happens anyway. Right. Is there a lime purchase we can... Uh, or a lime silo that we can place? Um, no. Not here. There isn't. Um, tools there might be under as well. Nope. That's all workshops. Nope, there is nothing in here we can place. So, yeah, we're going to have to go and buy big bags. So, I'm going to park this at the side of the field here. Ah, you can see our county is going around and still doing that field there. So, I'm going to park the uh, 7810 here. And we'll take the 8340 up to the shop. Ooh, that's not looking good. I think we might have to look at our open-air garden. That is looking like it needs some more water. And, of course, that is uh, pig feed that we're growing there. That's the corn. So, uh, yeah, looks like we're going to have to try and get some water onto that today as well. Uh, we've got our little New Holland transport trailer, which, quite frankly, on the back of this tractor looks ridiculous. Um, we could get the little 2000 series out and use that to, to pull this around, uh, which isn't a bad shout. But while we're on the road... I think uh, what we want to be doing is using uh, this tractor and, uh, and doing it with this. Uh, it would normally be... Uh, yeah, it would normally be the 7810 we'd probably have on this trailer. Simply because uh, it's a good one to, to use. And normally this would be on our uh, cedar uh, while we were working. Right, we want six bags of lime. It's not going to be well it'll be enough to do the first field. So six bags of lime. There we go. Let's buy that for 2,100, which we have the money for, which is great. And yep, that's out here. Grab the little teletruck. Our uh, JCB teletruck. Of course, um, came up as a uh, as a sale item. I actually need to alter this. Because this is currently owned by our farm. And I now have a way of having stuff owned by uh, the map and that we can use. Uh, basically, if you go into the XML and you change the farm ID for a piece of equipment to farm zero, uh, it's then usable by you, um, but it's not owned by you. And you can't remove it or, or anything like that, which is great for creating a shop forklift um it's how it's done on silver run with the equipment that you get on that uh that then can't be sold um such as the uh the dump truck up at mine and uh the wheel loader up there at the moment uh, as well and also the um forklift down at the main um uh the the main sawmill near the boatyard uh, that's how all of those are added into the map. So if you ever want to have on your playthrough something that's owned by another farm or, uh, own, yeah, owned by another farm or owned by the shop or anything like that, that's how you do it. You just set it to uh, farm ID zero. Um, I'm hoping we're going to see more map makers adopt that as well because I think that's a really neat thing. Last two, I've moved the trailer forward so that we can place these on the back. 
and hopefully not overload the whole thing. And bring it round and on. It can take three ton, three tons this trailer. I think he's probably way more than that. Right, we're going to put this back in the shed uh, where it lives here down at the shop. And then uh, we'll get these down to the field and get spreading some more lime. This little trailer is great for this. If we don't need a huge number of bags, it works quite well for doing this kind of job. Uh, but uh, when you uh, have lime, I think it's probably going to end up needing uh, to have a lot more of these lime bags. Uh, six might be enough for us to finish this field. So uh, I'm quite happy if that's the case. Uh, I think we might need to be doing a fair amount more. Well, that would be... So we used three bags on the, the first part of this field. Uh, if we use six more on here, that gives us a good idea of how many more bags we are going to need across the rest of this field, to be honest. And that is the first lot full off here. Oh, yeah, because it's not a bag per row. It's a... Uh, it's a uh, full one of the spreader per row. So, yeah, it's it's about th three quarters of a bag per spreader. A little bit over. So, it's not going to be quite as bad as I fear here. Uh, I think we're going to be okay. Let's start that going. Did we miss a bit? A little bit. And we're just keeping an eye on this. If we need to adjust it, then we can... Um, but at the moment, yeah, like that. And then it dropped back up again. I think we just want to do one across the whole field. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves low in various areas. And it doesn't seem to be much of a problem elsewhere. Uh, and in fact, I think we're getting the slightly lower amount because of overlapping with the previous row. Our lime spreader is loading again and our county is finished. So I'm going to clear the current uh, course off that and we're going to take it over to field 2C and get that started and done uh, so that all three of these fields are then going to be mulched ready for the next, uh, next crop. So let's... Come into here, uh, create job, course play field work, field position here, target position here, um, open course play generator, same again, three headlands, yep, that's all good, generate me a course, it's done that, and the start point is the top far corner, and it'll finish just round this one. Uh, that's pretty much perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. And uh, that means that this will be done by the end of the day. Does this tractor have enough fuel is the big question. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does. Um, it's gone through most of a tank doing these three fields. So there's a good chance this will want refueling by the end of the day as well. So first waypoint. Away you go. And we'll leave you to it. Meanwhile, we're going to go and get this field uh, finished. I think we've, we haven't got that many more rows. So there is a, a good chance here that we can get this done without too much hassle. Yeah, there we go. And uh, this, looking at this, we've maybe got three more runs. And we have plenty of... Uh, plenty of lime to do three more runs with come back out here for that and yeah we've got half half our spreader left and oh, wow that's not even going to be three runs that might even be just the two yeah looks like it's going to be just the two rows having refilled uh this yeah this will reach the whole way across here just about there's going to be a little bit at the far end here where it doesn't reach all the way across where i sort of turned onto the field at the beginning of the previous row 
I'm going to push myself back towards the other side as much as possible. Doesn't matter because we've got to refill anyway. And yeah, this is a lime spreader. I would hate to do a big field with it. I think uh, if we, yeah, next time we buy something, I think what we might do is go and uh, purchase or hire a larger lime spreader. Something that we we can do a lot of lime with because that uh, is uh, it's not a huge amount that we uh, get on here each time. And it's, as I said at the beginning, it's a lot of back and forth. A lot of trying to get uh, everything where I want it to uh, in order to uh, do what I need to. And that's covered that. Just this corner to do. And it's not adding to where we've already spread. Just the place where we're coming into. And as I said, the bit where we're overlapping, it's giving a, an interesting amount for. Right, that then has taken six bags of lime to get uh, this first field done. So I reckon we're going to need six bags per field. Uh, means we're going to be needing another nine bags to get all three of these fields complete. That's not bad at all. Um, it does just mean that what I need to do is get another bag off here. We'll go and put the other two bags by the side of the field. And then we can take our 8340 back up to the shop and grab another six bags. So back down to the shop with the 8340. And I'm going to try and load it up slightly differently this time. Uh, I kind of want to load it up from the back in order to uh, more easily get them off when uh, or get the bags off when we get back to the field so back down to the shop into the big bags uh, we want six bags of lime by that yes so 4200 in total for all of this lime uh, but it should give us a good boost in yield for three years and uh yeah that's what we want is uh is to maximize our yields on all of our fields we are gonna be in a really good place after this year uh we have so we made well over a hundred thousand uh in our first year uh which is not bad or it was a second year no it's our first year this is that that was our first year crop we sold and uh yeah we have made a massive amount of money off so uh second year we're gonna have field six which did not get planted at all in our first year uh that's gonna have crops in it this year um we are gonna have uh field two is gonna be fully planted as well so that is gonna uh, be great for us too oh that doesn't like doing this but hopefully it should be all right there we go whoa yeah, don't disconnect that. This is not a bag lifter. This is just a set of forks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have four more fields planted in uh, uh, for our third. It'll be our third harvest at the end of our second year. Because of course we had an immediate first harvest in our first year, uh, and that is going to be huge. That is going to be such a big harvest. Um, it's with that much money there are going to be multiple fields that we should be able to add at the end of our uh, end of our second year uh going into a, a, a winter of our third year um will just be yeah a huge amount and then uh going into the third year and for our fourth and possibly final harvest uh we should have a massive amount um yeah we'll see how we do but um i've not ended up skipping winter this year as i thought i was going to i did skip two days because obviously there was nothing we could do while we had all the snow on the ground um but we did uh have uh, most of the winter where we were doing stuff with that massive sugar beet contract and uh and trying to get field two ready 
um, because we bought a field. We need to have it ready for the planting season in March um, because there's a very small window for planting wheat. So, um, yeah, let's get this back to the field. And uh, when our planting window opens, we will be there to take full advantage of it. So we're back up to the field and everything is sitting here ready to go. What I'm going to do first, I think, is go round, do the whole head headland, make it easier for us to turn round. And it looks like, again, uh, one full tank on this is enough to do just over one row. I am slightly concerned that I've miscalculated the number of big bags I need for this field. Uh, it is entirely possible that we are going to find we need three more to do the last field. Uh, this is because the uh, we I said six per field. We used six on the first field. We had three left. We then went and bought another six. Uh, and uh, yeah, that I think means that we're going to be three short. This load might be enough to get this field done. We are not far off, and uh, it is, yeah, there's about one wits worth there. Oh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. So, start it up again, and away we go. Yeah, there is definitely enough there, or enough width there to, uh, to cover this. So stick this in the middle of this section and away we go. Is this going to make it to the end? Please let this make this to the end. Tell you what, it's going to be close, but that is enough. And that's got that field done. There's a little patch in the middle of it that's a slightly lower pH. Uh, but if we have a look here, the pH value across most of this field is perfect. There's a small dip somewhere around here-ish. Yeah, there we go. Good. So there's a, a good area around here. But it's still good. It's it's still only uh, half... Uh, in fact, yeah, half a, a half a point in pH down. So, um, yeah, not worried about that at all. And uh, just in time as well, as our other tractor is coming up to finishing the other field. Uh, so we have by four and a bit bags left. Uh, we'll see how far we can stretch these four and a bit bags. Uh, but I think they're going to go and, uh, and do the vast majority of this field. And then we may only need two more bags. We'll see how far this goes and how well this does. Um, and then when we get to the bottom of the field, we can go... And uh, stop our hired worker who is yeah, just coming to the end in that bottom corner. So, uh, yeah, let's head down there, sort them out and uh, spread some lime while we're doing it. So, yeah, the county has stopped down the bottom corner here. We'll just bring this down to here and stop just shy. And get this... Uh, off here and start it up and out the way. Oh, yeah, this needs to uh, head back to the yard and uh, Have a bit of a refuel because that is Desperate need of it, but uh, I think that's something we'll do at the end of the day Because it's quarter past four and I would very much like to get this field here limed this bottom section of the field here really isn't needing a lot of lime. It's looking uh, fairly good, actually. Uh, trying to keep up with it. I've uh, I dropped it manually a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit um, frost. But uh, yeah, it looks fairly good in general. Uh, only needs 0.75 across most of it. The rest of the field, though, is needing a lot more. We are still looking at a uh, 0.875 covering across the rest. So I'm trying to adapt as best I can to what the field needs. Um, we've, uh, we've used two tanks to get to this point. We are going to be down to our last two bags after this. 
And yeah, this is going to go into the evening because we're going to need a trip to the shop to get three more bags, I think. We may get away with two, but if we, uh, if we go for two and it's not enough, it's not going to be something we finish tonight. And I really, really want to finish this tonight. So this is our final full tank of lime from these big bags um we've got uh, this is this is the trouble we've got probably three rows left uh, after uh, the one that we're currently on so there there would possibly be it's very close but there would possibly be enough in two bags to get this done that would be 4,000 liters it kind of depends on how far this one goes we're still on 0.87 so we're still using a little bit less than uh, than we were using on the other fields and yeah we've got it at the right width as well uh, this bit of the field has taken half a tank oh yeah I think we can do this with two bags I do very much um, and uh, I think we can possibly risk that we do need to go up though to the full uh, one pH to do this and if we get to the end of this row or get within a stone's throw of it uh, then I think yeah two bags are gonna do this field we're losing light fairly quickly now but uh, I think we'll go and grab two more bags from the shop, load them onto the trailer, get them up here, and then we will be in a position uh, to get the last of this in. Especially as we have a little bit left in this bag here anyway. So um, this should do us absolutely fine. Two more bags bought for another £700. Uh, up. And we'll get them onto the trailer fairly quickly. Get them back down to the field. Uh, it's gone six o'clock. But there's so little work left to do. We'll get it finished off today. Uh, out a little bit. And on. There we go. And back it off carefully. Whoa. Stay. Yeah, there we go. Right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to park this back up and we'll get these back down to the field. The moon is rising and we've got our last two bags of lime back down to the field. We'll grab them and onto here. We couldn't have got all of them onto the trailer in the first place. So uh, I had hoped that it would only take another six. It took another eight. But this should be enough to get this complete now. Uh, let's get some lights on on this tractor. In fact, let's get some work lights on on this tractor. And, uh, and then we can see everything. And yeah, it, it is literally a little bit and two rows to go, which is not much more than a single, uh, a single tank on this. Uh, but um, because this holds sort of three quarters of a bag uh, it is going to be over one bag to get it done and i think we're going to end up with a fairly small slither to do down the side there uh, but i don't think that is going to be uh yeah that is not going to be covered by what we've got in here now we are we are going to be short it might be enough in that bag though in which case i only needed one bag uh, we've got 228 liters left i don't think there's much in this bag actually to be honest we'll see if we can get away without using the last bag at all uh, 45 percent might be enough three bags would have definitely been too much uh two bags I still think was probably the right choice to go to. Yep, we are going to be ever so slightly short to get to the end of here. That's ridiculous. Uh, I reckon not many more liters are going to be needed for this. 
and then that will be this field complete so we'll load it up again uh we'll put all of this into here what i'll, pro I'll probably do is put all of this into here then use what we we need to and then the last 350 liters because i think we'll use more than that in the uh in this last bit of field uh we can then put that into here unload it all and unload a single big bag it won't be a complete one um but it will be a single one rather than have a couple kicking about so start it up and spread the last final bit on here and yes we should be able to get the rest of that bag into here and unloaded but we have got all of field two limed today which is the important thing that's exactly what we needed all of our fields are now ready to be planted again um which was the biggest worry about buying field two uh, and we bought it with enough time even with a little bit of a set setback in order to do it there we go unload this then so out it comes and there we go so i'm going to get all of these back to the farm uh, get all of this put away um it's been a pretty successful day here near attingham park though Today, we're going to be getting the seeding started. Our seeding window has opened. And uh, we're going to have to get the spring wheat in first. So we're going to do field 2A first. Get the spring wheat into that. Uh, get that all done. Um, and then over the next couple of days, we should be able to also get the uh, canola in as well. Um, we're looking to do that uh, between sort of late March, uh, early April across our three fields of that. And then uh, as we go into April and May, so late April and into May, uh, we're then looking to get our sorghum planted after that. So uh, pretty full seeding schedule to go. And amongst that, I would very much like to try and get the rest of the medium weeds taken out of our fields. So there's a fair amount of work we're going to have to do to get those gone as well. But the initial thing to do is, uh, yeah, is to get this done. If we can get this done fairly quickly today, uh, we'll then see if we can do something about the weeds. How are we? Or fertilizer i think i want to get a little bit more fertilizer in so let's start this up again and i'm gonna grab one more bag of fertilizer get our cedar finished and then we can head out to the field and uh, and start getting the wheat in now despite being much more organized this year we've got a much much fuller schedule especially now that we've added field 2a onto here so uh yeah it's it's gonna be a just a complete uh all systems go for most of the year i think we oh wow we need a lot of nitrogen on here and I don't think this is I don't think this can apply as much as we we actually need if you look at that yeah we can apply a maximum of 135 uh, kilograms per hectare and uh and yeah we need a lot more than that uh seed rate we need to turn off the auto seed rate as well so deactivate automatic seed rate uh we need a standard seed rate on here i think i thought it would be low but let's just go on to the middle of the field yeah it's a low seed rate seed rate we need to do here so we've got the right seed rate um it's now just our application rate and yeah we i think have a well can we increase this application rate let's have a look uh increase application rate uh, is k and m so up that uh, let's close that and see if yeah we can we can apply it right up to there that is that is 200 kilograms per hectare uh, that is a huge application rate and the uh it's not gonna go very far i don't think so let's 
pop back out here and see if we can't start applying this. Drop down a little bit. There we go. Plenty of power in this uh, 8340. And it's not going down as fast as I thought it would. But it is going down. And yeah, we're going to have to refill after not too long. Uh, hopefully, we'll get quite a way into this field before I need to refill. At the moment, though, we're doing pretty well. I had to double check my seed rate because actually I was uh, seeding at a higher rate than the field needed. And it meant my the, the amount of seeds we had was going down faster than I expected. Uh, thankfully, I've corrected it and we seem to be using seeds at a far uh, more uh, acceptable rate at this point. And uh, yeah, the field is going from a very deep red up to a very deep green uh, in its nitrogen level, which is perfect. Uh, means we won't have to go over this field again. And uh, the worst thing we'll have to worry about um, as we go in further into the year will be the weeds and getting rid of those. As I said, we're going to need a hoe for that. What, what I'm slightly worried about um, with that uh, is that I think our crops have grown a bit. Uh, so we're at the very least going to need to have some care wheels on whichever tractor we take in to get rid of them. Uh, but uh, I think more than likely we may have missed our window of opportunity on the other wheat fields to get rid of those weeds. So uh, we'll keep an eye out. We'll see how it goes. Um, but certainly we're going to be looking at getting a hoe on here uh, in order to deal with any, we uh, any weeds in the rest of our fields. I love the efficiency of this, uh, this seeder. How nice it is that on here we can save a lot of time on a farm where we've got some fairly small equipment and some fairly big fields. Uh, the width on this is nice. The fact that it's a direct seeder is really nice. Uh, and the fact that it also does uh, the fertilizing as well. Uh, all of it just comes together to save us a whole load of time throughout the year. And, and makes things easier for us to do. And it means that the six days that we've basically got to get, uh, what, three fields off here done. Uh, plus uh, another four fields. So we've we got seven fields to get planted in six days. So at least one of those fields, or one of those days, we've got to plant two fields uh, is really great. I mean, I'm very, very pleased that we've got this piece of kit to do it um, because it means at the end of that as well, we don't have to worry about uh, getting these, these fields fertilized as well. As I was saying before, we only really have to worry about getting them uh, getting them uh, de-weeded or uh, getting them weeded uh, and clearing up that mess because direct seeding like this does mean that you end up with uh, fields that not only have the small weeds as they germinate but the big weeds as well so uh, yeah we need to clear out those two and uh, and yeah we've got a few choices of hose uh, to go and do that with uh, and I think that when we get past these first two days as I said we will no we'll actually end up grabbing a hoe and trying to get rid of the weeds in the other two wheat fields before the end of these two days so probably put this doing canola or yeah doing the canola next time and uh, and then we'll head over and get the wheat fields uh, hoed and cleared out of the weeds so that uh, yeah everything gets back on track and just adding a second field we don't seem to be disrupting ourselves too much at the moment we managed to turn this field around pretty quick last time and uh, and as a result yeah they are as ready to plant and as ready to do as any other field on here and uh, it's just going to make things so much easier and, uh, and give us the most profitable year we've had yet 
here on Attican Park. We may even get 200,000. And if that's the case, uh, we are certainly looking at expanding the farm again uh, at the end of the year. What amazes me at the moment, though, is we are over halfway through this field. We're halfway through planting this. And uh, we have only used 50, uh, sorry, 45% of the uh, fertilizer. I was expecting us to have to refill a long time ago with the fertilizer. But uh, no, it's holding fast. Uh, and we seem to be uh, on track to not have to refill this until we move on to the canola. If that's the case for all of our fields here, uh, we are going to do really well. Uh, we're, we're not going to use up that much seed. The place where we're going to use the seed and the fertilizer, I think, is when we go and hit uh, field 12C especially. It's our largest field on the farm. It is all silty clay. And it is going to require a heavy dose of seeds to get it done. So I think we'll end up... We're going to end up using three times the seeds to do that field. And as a result, that is that is going to be uh, one that we probably have to refill partway through. Uh, this field, though, uh, not so much. It's definitely taking uh, the seeds pretty well. And, and that's partly because this is just loam. We are... We on the best type of soil we can be on here. Um, like most of our fields here on uh, near Attican Park, uh, the field is uh, solidly one type of soil. A real boon for us here because it means that as we're not using the variable seed rates or the variable application rates, uh, we tend to end up with a single application rate and a single uh, seed rate. Uh, across all of these fields which is great the only field where we don't have that is field three and we end up having to use an average which is sort of the worst of both worlds rather than the the, the best of it so uh, i'm i'm quite happy with uh, with this field and the way this is working even field six over the far side of the river uh has a i think it's pretty much solidly uh silty clay yeah yeah look at this so silty clay all of these are silty clay this one here has this tiny bit of the silty clay through there um but yeah three is the one that straight through the middle of it has uh has that this field here um the one thing uh we do have is this has a low environmental score at the moment that will go up as we go through the year and start to match our other fields uh, it is only like this at the moment because it's come straight off uh, being a contract field and we've just bought it. So, uh, yeah, I'm expecting the uh, environmental score across this field to rise fairly quickly as we go through the year and uh, end up fairly high by the time we're selling any crops off it. I'm leaving a little bit of headland down this end here uh, because... It's at a bit of an angle, and I'm going to need to come down to sort it. Uh, I want to make sure I don't leave too much of a headland, though, because if I do, uh, then we won't be able to do it in just a single stroke, which is what I want to achieve it in, really. A bit like the uh, headland we've got at the other end, where I've been measuring it so that we can try and keep it as close as possible need to make sure we're inside the other tire track though otherwise we end up failing to uh to get everything but yeah we should have i think it's about one width at this end here that we'll only have to clean up it might be actually that's a couple of widths so uh yeah it looks like we're gonna have to go around the field a couple of times anyway in order to clear this up uh, but we are almost there and we still have 48% of the seeds in here and a whopping 30% of the, uh, the fertilizer. Uh, having put 200 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare on this field, uh, that's a little bit mad. It really is. I had expected our usage to be much more than that. 
just about there we've got one maybe two more rows on the outside of here to go and uh yeah we ha definitely have uh, two rows at this end to go so the way i'm going to handle this is to come to the end here set ourselves here and then we're going to start by pulling this in on this side here and trying to even it out a bit. So round and in. And then when that's straightened up a bit, down we go. And we'll take this end here up to this corner. And uh, yeah, then we'll uh, we'll go round and get the rest of this headland done and try and make it match up. And uh, yeah, I think we'll have a little bit of overlap on this headland just to make sure that we capture everything and uh, end up with the best coverage that we can get from this on this field. I'm actually quite pleased with this. The fact that we've managed to get all of this done before 1pm in the afternoon and we've managed to do it without having to refill the uh, the cedar at all is quite frankly amazing. I was expecting uh, much more to have to do that. Uh, also means we've got a massive amount of seed and fertilizer still left back at, in our shed. Uh, we are going to take this back to the shed and refill it, I think. And with so much of the day left, uh, we might as well uh, strike while the iron's hot and uh, see if we can get that second field of the seven that we know we need to do in six days done. That just means a single field a day uh, is left and, uh, and, and we can easily manage that. Um, the two fields that we've got to put canola in, actually, um, after this, are field, uh, I think it's field 11 up there. Uh, sorry, field 1 up the top. Uh, that is going to have uh, some canola put in it. And in fact, um, is a lot better off uh, nitrogen wise than this field is so it should end up using slightly less nitrogen than this field does and then uh, field 2b is going to use as much uh, nitrogen as this is um, actually that's a really interesting take I think we need to look carefully oh no it's 12c yeah, it's uh, 1, 2B, and 12C that need to uh, to have uh, the canola in, which makes sense. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's um, that's a good way to go with that. I was initially thinking, oh, why should uh, why does the canola get uh, two fields that have uh, the which are loam and are going to produce the best yield? That's because one of our crops does have to have two fields. Uh, that is uh, that is the loam, and this year it's going to be uh, the uh, the turn of the canola. So that will produce a lot of canola for us this year, uh, which is only good news because canola sells for really good amounts of money. Uh, that though is uh, this field done. I need to go and refill this. And uh, then we do have another job that needs doing this afternoon on the farm. So uh, we're going to go and refill this, get this going with the canola. I think with the uh, with a uh, course play course uh, running, and then we can uh, turn our attention to the other job that needs doing on the farm this afternoon. And that job is over here. So while we've got a pretty good setup here, we've got 587 liters of water and 662 liters of uh, seeds and a fair amount of solid fertilizer on here still as well. Uh, these are looking decidedly withered. Um, and that is because we are out of, uh, we're out of water here. So, uh, yeah, we need to give some water to this. I think we're going to try and put in a water tank in order to do that. 
But as I said, first we need to get this refilled with uh, fertilizer and seeds and get it going on field one. Uh, so we're moving across the farm with the canola planting. And we get in here and get another bag of the Cali. Yep, we can. And then uh, it won't take... So it takes a couple of bags of the fertilizer to fill this. And it's about a bag and a uh, half bag and three quarters to, uh, to fill this. Um, whereas the seeds, it takes a lot less of it. Uh, to fill it each time so we are we are getting through the fertilizer quicker will that fit through there nope so back this off and see if we can get in here get another bag or get a bag of the double top this time it's all the same stuff I we, we have been buying at the double top we just when we were unloading last time, we ended up unloading into bags, uh, into Cali bags. So that's fine. Same type of fertilizer and still 681 liters of that in here. And then we just need to grab a bag of the seeds and get that on. I think we are gonna end up, uh, as I said, uh, needing to go and buy oh, wow that's got nothing in it uh needing to go and buy some more fertilizer not sure how full some of these bags are okay that's better thousand liters in that let's load this up and then we can uh, get this back out to the field and get it going and sort out the horrible water situation with our uh well with our open air gardens with the cedar refilled we've got it back over to field one and we want to take it on onto the field and then calibrate so we'll take the application rate down uh 165 should do it we have a look yeah we've got some deeper red patches in a couple of places uh but yeah I think 165 seems to be about right. Some places it's a little bit low. Some places it's a little bit high. Uh, in all instances, I think it's uh, fine for us. So let's bring up course play and set ourselves a course. And there we go. So that then will finish down this bottom corner. We have the right level of everything set, and it's going to use less fertilizer on this field uh, than on the other one. And away you go. Oh, no, no. Ah, oh, that is the wrong crop. We are going to end up with a crop of uh, canola. I wonder if it will change it. Let's try again, because it is a direct seeder. So, uh, canola away. And we'll see if it actually does canola there or wheat. Yep. Oh, apart from a tiny little patch, it is actually doing canola. So, that's really good news. We can leave that going, and we can head back over to the yard and deal with the gardens. Right, so in the past, we've had to sort these gardens out by driving a very long way to actually get any water. Uh, basically, gives me two choices. Either we try and modify the ground uh, to make it easier for us to, to get at the water down here somewhere. And I'm not totally against that. Uh, we, could, we could drop it at the edge of field so part of me, you know what? We could very easily drop this at the edge here. I think we might do that. I had a, I had an idea that I was going to put a water uh, tank in. But to be honest, I'm going to try and drop this. So let's go uh, with our construction tool. So landscaping here is pretty good. Uh, what I want to do is lower this, and we want to lower this bit here. So, 
like that. Oh, wow. Just sort of be very careful because I don't want to create holes. I just want to lower the land a bit. Right. Then we want to smooth it out. So, come on. Smooth out. Thank you. Raise that a little bit. And smooth it out again. Let's enlarge that. There we go. Right. How's that doing? That looks like... That looks like a fairly good place for us to be able to uh, back a trailer down and in, maybe. I think we need to smooth it out a little bit more. So let's smooth it quite a way back, actually. Yeah, like that. Not using an awful lot of... Um, a lot of money to do this, really, thankfully. Right, how's that? Yes! So that is a much easier way for us to get down here and to uh, get some water. So let's go get a water trailer and see if we can actually uh, get some water out of the river. So we're going to use 7810 to do this. And our water trailer is there. Uh, I don't know. If that, I don't think there's any water in this at the moment. But having to go a lot less distance to uh to go and pick up water is going to make a massive difference to us and we just need to make sure that we have an effective roadway through so i don't ideally i don't really want to go around the edge of field three i think what we want to do is find access uh maybe through the trees over here and there are some fairly small trees yeah there's we should definitely be able to maybe knock out a tree or two and have a route through here straight down to this, I think. So that's going to be a job for later. Uh, us being able to, to come down here. In fact, I can see a very clear route for us to go. Reverse this up and down into the water. Nice, gentle slope much much better than what was here before and refill it oh come on there we go you just need to get it far enough into the river our tractor is slowly sinking into the river right forwards yeah let's not drive too deeply in pull this very heavy water trailer out i think there's some more work to do here I think we need to uh, get it so that we are even less of a slope down to here. Oh, I know why we're having trouble. Because we haven't hooked that up. Let's try this again. There we go. Much easier. And yeah, you can see up here, if we were to take this tree out in the middle, that would give us a very direct roadway through here. Um, and back to our garden. So I think that's something we might do. I think we might uh, go in and take that tree out. It's only a single tree and do that. Let's reverse up to here. I could have started overloading, but I want to get right up to the tank, really, for a little bit more realistic approach. And there we go. Unload. And look at that, instantly rejuvenated. We get some more corn going into here. I, I think we probably need to put a whole load of water back in the other one as well. So we'll fill this one up uh, and we'll go and get another water trailer. Um, and then I think we might have a look at our pigs and see if they need any feeding. So carefully backing down to the river. Right, and refill. Go into first gear and forwards. Hold ourselves there. Yeah, definitely need to uh, make this, again, a little bit less steep. It's better than it was, and it's easier to get down here than it was. Uh, but that's still uh, quite a steep drop. And you can see the tractor is still struggling a little bit to get out of it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll bring the road 
we take that tree out, we should be able to bring the roadway through here without too much hassle. In actual fact, there's a fairly good roadway we could do put in there without taking that tree out. So I might do that instead, to be honest. And then we can put a little bit of a roadway down here and uh, do this. There's still so much to do with this yard. I was hoping to build the house this year, but we're not there yet. Uh, we need about 40,000 to do that, and we're not in the position for that. We'll see where we are, I think, at the end of this year. Uh, as I said, we should be in a really good place. With our gardens up and running out full capacity again, what we need to do now is sort the pigs out a little bit. Uh, they're running a little bit low on a couple of their food types. So let's have a look in here and... Uh, you can see base food they need a bit of a top up and protein especially they need a bit of a top up so protein we have is the sunflowers so let's pop into here and output some of the sunflowers open up here uh, let's select from this one sunflowers yep so spawn items uh, we can spawn up to six pallets, so okay. Um, and then from the other one, uh, which is this one here, which we've just sorted out, they have it. Wow, we have so much. So uh, let's. Uh, oh, we need to go and spawn stuff from that. So into this side, close that. Come over here and open the production menu. And we should then be able to spawn from here. Uh, I can spawn 30 pallets. We will spawn 10 on this side here. And that should do it. Yeah. So uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five on there. And only two on there. That's interesting. It hasn't spawned that many. Um, and it's left gaps at the end. So... Don't know why it's done that. Uh, we've got all of these potatoes as well. We have more than enough food, though, for the pigs these days, uh, which is amazing. And once the fertilizer runs out on the stuff we are running on here at the moment, um, we're going to start using uh, manure from the pigs in order to feed them as well. So, uh, yeah, at that point, the only thing we ever have to buy to keep the gardens going is seeds. And that is a really, really cheap way to be feeding our pigs. Final two pallets of corn for now. We have, we actually still have plenty in these gardens to feed. Um, but this will put us over 80,000 litres in the pig feed, uh, which is more than enough for them. I'm just trying to redress the balance a little bit on their food because we put all of our barley into there this year. And as a result, they have a lot of that and of their main base feed, uh, which is this corn. Uh, they have, uh, well, they didn't have very much. They now have over 12,000 liters. So you can see here, yeah, 50% of this we really want to be base food. So we, we want to get that up there. Grain is still a huge amount that they've got in there. Uh, protein they're still very low on so we'll get more sunflower seeds in there and the root crops is probably at about the right level at the moment so uh, yeah plenty to be going on with with our sheep uh, with our pigs sorry we don't have sheep on here uh, with our pigs so that's all good and I'm happy with the state of those now only thing we need to check is on the progress of this field and yeah it's doing fairly well so uh i think we're probably going to leave this here for today uh we will uh, be back on this field next time with this tractor uh getting this done uh today we are going to be finishing off the seeding in fact we're sitting in here with our course play track that's currently running on field one uh getting the canola in we're looking to get at least two fields of canola in today 
Uh, and then that will put us in really good stead. We'll only have a single field of canola and three fields of the sorghum to get in after that. So that is going to be really useful. In the meantime, we are going to be taking our 7810 here up to the shop and seeing if we can get ourselves a hoe and get rid of those uh, pesky weeds we've still got kicking around in our uh, winter wheat fields. So let's take our 7810 here and head up to the shop it doesn't go overly fast this tractor but there we are uh so there should be several hoes that we've got available to us uh i did download several ones that are mods um and should fit in with this tractor fairly well I'm also hoping that we'll be able to put some care wheels on this tractor because I think we're now past the point at which uh, not having care wheels will cause issues and, uh, and cause us to destroy crops. So let's have a look in here. First, let's just check the shop or the sales. Nothing in here that's really of any use to us. So uh, instead, we're going to go into the weeders section and have a look at these and this is the weeders that we've got so these are all hoes uh which is great uh 90 horsepower so we've got 110 horsepower for these two uh which are oh sugar beet uh so we've got uh rotor net control rotor uh sugar beet sunflower and maize so we actually want this one here uh, we can't afford to buy it outright. We're going to have to lease it, I think. And uh, we can probably set the rim color. Oh, yeah. To a nice gray to match our tractors a bit better. So, uh, yeah, I think this is the one we want. Uh, there's a good six and a half meters on this. So they're nice and wide. They're not hugely horsepower hungry. And if we lease it, it's going to cost us 316 a day. So, yes, uh, I will happily take that. And then I need to see if I can put some uh, wheels, some care wheels onto this tractor. And uh, we could probably do that actually back down at our farm. There's a, uh, we, we can do it here at the shop, but uh, we could possibly end up switching tractors, especially as I notice our cedar is now in need of being refilled. So hook this up, get this on here. And what we'll do is we'll head down to the farm. We'll see if we can't uh, get some care wheels on this. And uh, then, if so, we might have to switch the tractors over. So quickly, before we head down to the field with anything, we'll just pull into here and have a look at the options for this tractor. Uh, Customise. Will it take... So if we put the Trelleborg wheels on, we do get narrow tires. They don't look massively different, um, but they are narrows. Uh, we've got twins. We've got rear twins. Yeah. So uh, those won't cost us anything. Nope. Narrow tires won't cost us anything. So customize that. Yes. Okay. So we can reconnect those like that and reconnect the pipes. And then I need to just take a bag of whatever it is that is needed by our uh, by our cedar out to the field. Um, because it is uh, very much in need of refilling before we can continue. So there's still plenty of seed in our cedar. What it's missing is some of uh, the fertilizer so i'm just going to top it up with this this should be enough to get the rest of the field done i think uh but we'll find out fairly quickly so let's head over here and open that up yeah there we go and we should be able to get in from the side front section is what needs to be refilled like that and uh yeah that should be enough then to get Oh, it's knocking up slightly. Oh, it's getting stuck on the top door. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, this. You need to get it in front of the door like that. And there we go. Now we're filling it up. And we'll put the rest of the bag in there. 
that is probably not going to be enough to completely fill it up um but it is enough to uh to get everything running so let's set that off again and then it'll be good again yeah there it goes and then this can head back down to the farm and we can get on with doing some hoeing before we get started with the hoe though uh we are a little bit low on fuel in this tractor i have got a full set of weights on this but uh, even so this is proving to be a little bit rear heavy uh, not overly happy uh, it, it is and oh i'm worried our I'm worried that we might have ended up with weeds now that are too big for this. If that's the case, we're going to have a problem. Let's have a look at our weed situation. It's not looking horrible, horrible. We'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. There's some bigger ones further into the field. So uh, that might be an issue. Uh, care wheels are doing what they should. So weed are down. And away we go. And... Oh, is it touching these weeds? It's not touching these weeds. That's not good. So yeah, the weeds have grown a stage and we're too late to get them with this piece of kit. We've still got our original weeder in here. Is that something that's leased? Let's check. We can get that returned if it is. Yeah, that is something that's leased. So uh, I'm going to return that, clear that out of our shed. Uh, and then we'll put this down here out the way as well it's annoying that's uh that's not good it's a big problem for us uh hopefully it will get rid of the big weeds when we come to do the or oh, when the next month rolls around so uh when we move into april we're gonna have weeds on every field that we manage to plant today and uh, in that case uh, we're gonna need to do something about those and get them uh get them done uh hopefully it'll take out the medium weed so i'm gonna leave the care wheels on this at the moment uh and uh we'll go from there so seeing as I'm not going to be able to do any weeding today, and I'm a little bit annoyed about that, what we're going to do is a job that's actually been sitting around for a while in the yard, and I just haven't had a chance to do it. Uh, and that is unloading all of these straw bales from our trailer. We kind of need this trailer. Um, it's going to be really useful for us for transferring stuff across. Oh, wow. Will this pull this out of here? Even slightly wheelied. I'm not yet. Yeah, this is a lot of weight on the back of this tractor. Whoa, that'll do. Uh, let's try and detach that. Yeah. yeah, that was not a great maneuver, but it has pulled the trailer out far enough for me to get the uh, straw bales off here. So what I want to do here is uh, stack these a little bit better. Let's come into here and into there. Uh, yeah, so there are only two across. So we can go and put this in here. And we're basically going to go three across in here. Uh, and stack up as high as this little tractor will let us. Uh, which should be okay. I think we can probably get... Well, hell, if I can get too high off here... We should be able to go three high at least possibly four. Oh, and the one thing we've got is on the back we've also got a stack of three as well we fit a lot of bales on this trailer we really did uh, so first things first let's grab a pair of bales here and them off yeah i'm gonna try and do stacks of two for this and uh, as I said, three across. We should be able to go at least four high. Depending on how close we can get into this corner here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I almost spoke too soon. There we go. Yeah, get that into there. And then that means that, uh, yeah, we can go six across 
and uh, and have a nice stack at the back uh, across there like that really good really helpful and makes me really happy to see that work that well that one on the top though that is coming down getting very near the end of the trailer now and you can see i've moved the lower level out uh, by another set of bales so that we can put the next level on i don't think i can get a, a or reach another level on top so uh, we're gonna leave it there oh we've got rain beginning to come down so i want to get these last couple of bales undercover uh now this is where it's going to get interesting because these last few bales of course are sitting on the end of the trailer and this actually probably is not a great way to have had these bales here but if I'm slow and careful and cautious, we can lift them off, make them more accessible to us. And yeah, the trailer would probably have tipped up uh, with those on the back. It certainly was wavering. So uh, yeah, we probably should have got those off earlier than we did. Uh, they'll get a little bit of dampness on them, but nothing that'll really cause any big issues. And it's not in here like so. And then we're done. Well, one more to go. But, uh, yeah, happy with that. That's, uh, let's see if I can push those top two on a little bit better. And, uh, and make that work. And in and on. And, yeah, that's as far back as those will go. I think that's because there's a bar going across at that point. And so all the other ones are sort of a little bit further back than that. We'll make it interesting if uh, taking sort of stuff. Try to take two stacks off the top. But I think the way we are at the moment with straw for the pigs, uh, we don't actually need to uh, put much. In fact, let's have a quick look at that. I did notice that the actual uh, straw bale that was in there has disappeared. And in fact, yes. So it has gone down slightly, uh, the, uh, the amount of straw. We've got 8,000 litres in here. So we're... we're not going to put a bale in there yet but i will do when it drops a bit further i think it's only dropped about four thousand liters uh, and the bale that was in there the the bale we had sitting around in there that has now disappeared completely there we go though this is finished and i'm noticing that once again our cedar is asking to be refilled i know that it has made it around to the headlands um, I have no idea exactly what it is that's missing. Uh, either way, we have a bag of something that we can take out there to get it refilled. As before, it is a lack of fertilizer that we have. So let's uh, open that up. And once again, get it refilled with this. There we go and uh, that then should allow it to finish the field i mean it's doing fairly well we are on to the last headland uh, and it'll be finished here fairly quickly it has taken a little bit longer than i expected it's already half past 12 and we we want to get at least one more field done today so uh let's turn that back to there i am running the new version of course play on here but uh, there's an option that shows you which point uh, it's running on. And for some reason, it doesn't seem to give me that option here. So, yeah, I've got the green, I've got nothing, and I've got yellow. Uh, there is a blue option that just doesn't seem to be appearing at the moment. So, don't know where that's gone. I've had that on every other game save that I've used course play on so far. And it's a really good function. It shows you exactly where on... Of the course play run it is um but yeah it's uh, it's not doing this at the moment so don't know why that is and don't know what's causing that i'm actually going to take over with the last bit of this it's now having issues with the hedges around the edges and uh, i want it to get to the uh, the corners so we're gonna do this ourselves for this last round just to make sure that we get the whole field done such a small amount of, uh, of canola seed we've used compared to the amount of nitrogen we've used. Of course, 
we've used a huge, huge amount of nitrogen on here, getting this field done. It's going to be different once we get on to the uh, more, uh, more heavier soil. Uh, we're going to end up with a much, much heavier seed usage when we get on to uh, the bigger parts of field 12. I mean, field 12C is, uh, is one of the fields that we need to do with canola. And that is going to be really, really heavy on the seed usage. Uh, however, on most of the rest of this, we seem to be pretty good for. Uh, we've got two. We've got another field of, that's that's solid loam to do with uh, canola. So two uh, C is going to be loam as well. And our seeding window for the canola does last for at least another month. So we don't have to get all of the canola seeded today. We can get a field of it done uh, next month as well. Uh, but we start getting into the window for sorghum next month as well. So it basically gives us two more days to get uh, two more fields of uh, the canola seeded. Uh, it also gives us four more days to get three fields of the uh, sorghum seeded. Ideally, we want to try and cut that down a bit. We've only done half a field today. We did one and a half fields last time. So uh, there is definite scope to improve here. And if we can get another field down today, that does just leave us with one field per day for the rest of our seeding window, uh, which is perfect. That will give us an absolute perfect amount of time to do it because we only need to get one field done today. And when one of those fields is 12C and the other is 12A, um, that is going to be the kind of time we need to get a field done. And speaking of fields that are done, we're all done here. What we want to do now is get across to, to uh, 2B or 2C. Uh, 2B is where we're going next. So that is over this way. And I'm not going to go all the way around the yards and everything. We've got enough space at the top of this field here. Um, but what I do want to do is uh, get a course play course set up. And that should do the trick. So, uh, yeah, let's head over to this corner. And we can get it started. So start point is there. Line her up. Again, we're on loam. Uh, wow, we do need to do extra on here. Because this has no... This has no nitrogen on it at all, this field. Increase nitrogen level to 200. Uh, this is... We are definitely going to have to go and buy some fertilizer now because this is not lasting long on this field. Actually, slightly fortuitous that uh, we've not been able to use this for doing work with the hoe today. Uh, it's going to be much, much easier for us. Uh, to get stuff up to the field with this tractor. So let's pop up to the shop and see what they can give us. I think we can buy some slightly cheaper stuff as well. Yeah, so it is slightly cheaper. The The base stuff is... Uh, no, 1,800. So this... Uh, yeah, this is still 1,800. Uh, let's grab the double top then. Uh, we want to get as many of these as we can. Uh, that is six for 10,000. Let's start with that. Okay. Uh, I have noticed we've got 40,000 liters of the... Uh, uh, of slurry, which uh, should come in very, very useful. Uh, we might be able to spread some of that. We haven't got anything that we can spread it with at the moment. Uh, but the more fields we can spread that on, the better next year. We want more piglets. We need piglets. And uh, and maybe we'll get some this year. Uh, because if we do, that will increase our pig population quite a bit. And uh, we'll end up with a uh, even more slurry to use on the farm round drop it down right that should load those up 
we can put this back in the shed and uh, head down to the field because I bet in no time we're going to need to be filling up that cedar. Right, how are you doing for uh, fertilizer? Actually, not too bad. That could have been so much worse than it is. But uh, it is actually uh, doing okay. So I'm slightly surprised. Every use of fertilizer and it's not getting through it too fast. Just having a look over the pigs and yeah, do you know what? Our pig population has doubled. Uh, so we have six, uh, six out of five. We've got 13 month olds here. Uh, then we've got some two months olds, uh, two month olds, uh, 13 months olds and some more two months olds. So yeah, we have, uh, we've actually got a whole load of piglets. Uh, which is fantastic news. Now, I'm trying to work out, I'm trying to remember how much we bought our original pigs for. Uh, 695, I think, is quite a way under. Um, but we could sell all of these pigs and get instant profit from them. I want to fatten them up a little bit first. Uh, they are, yeah, so when they hit puberty... I think that is probably where we want to uh, the the point at which we possibly want to see about selling them. Um, at that point, uh, we are halfway through reproduction on the pig, so we're looking at some more piglets turning up in the not too distant future, which is fantastic. So I'm very happy with that. We have got forty thousand liters of slurry, which is great. Uh, we got plenty of food for all of them. Uh, oh, actually, I might go and see if we can give them some more protein, though, after we have refilled our cedar with some more fertilizer, which is what I'm going to do at the end of this row. We are down to just 1% fertilizer in this. So take the hired worker off and we'll head down to the bottom of the field. And then I can get this to load up with some more fertilizer. Uh, we should only need to put a single big bag in. Uh, but I think that'll be enough. There we go. And uh, N to open that up. Uh, let's get some of these undone. Yeah. So I think I've overestimated or un uh, overestimated exactly how much fertilizer I need on here. I think we're actually in a fairly good place uh, with the amount we've got now. This should last us a little while. We Most of our other fields aren't too bad as far as nitrogen goes. Uh, we, got, we did a fair amount of this last year and uh, it should be okay. So let's get that emptying out as i said before this is really fiddly you might have to ah yeah do it this way that out swing it out slightly and then turn in and that should then empty into our cedar and there we go that's a full bag into there so we'll just put this down here i don't think we're gonna need to refill this again uh we are 77 percent full that has been enough in the past to uh to sort this so i want to take my little tractor back to the farm and maybe we can sort some bits out uh for the pigs i think we need to get some more of those sunflower seeds in for now drop that down turn those off and we'll leave it to go now the first thing i'm going to do is remove the potatoes we've got four pallets of potatoes here they're getting in the way of me uh, extracting the sunflowers from our gardens so into here and you know, under and grab they don't sell fairly well um in fact, we could really sell a lot of stuff off these gardens if you want i think what i'm gonna end up doing though is probably deactivating them a bit i don't i don't think we need possibly 
Uh, I think we might not need both gardens running all the time. Uh, I, I think that they are a little over the top from that point of view. Uh, I put two in because I thought, oh, I'll do one crop in, you know, I'll do some of the feed in one and some of the feed in the other. It's actually turned out to be really, really uh, overpowered from that point of view. So I'm not sure we need two gardens running at once. Uh, I do want to get these in over here. We're not really storing any lime at the moment because until we get a new field, uh, we, we don't need any lime. Um, if we do do lime again, I think what we're going to end up doing is... Oh, no, 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 go on, stay there. Stay. Thank you. Uh, what we will do is um, get a bigger lime spreader or get a uh, or, or get an actual uh, lime, uh, lime silo. In fact, people were telling me... Oh, wow. Look at that. It's the second time I've seen one of those. Uh, so people were telling me that they are under containers? No, containers was where I was looking for them. Don't think they're under silos. Uh, no. Tools? No. Uh, silo extensions? No, not by the looks of things. Is that water? Supplementary water tank. Um, not under productions, uh, animals, no, decorations, no, people were telling me that they were, they were under something in here, and I can't see them, I can't, I can't see, they're not under tools, uh, they are not under containers as far as I can see, uh, not under silo extensions, not under silos. No, that's all add-ons. Uh, yeah, not under silos from the looks of things. And also not under sheds. So, no, I can't see anything here that is, uh, uh, is that. Those are all standard factories and everything. Uh, not under uh, selling points. Not under greenhouses, not under orchards, and not under generators. So, yeah, I, d I don't know where they are. They, they don't seem to be anywhere in here. Um, they are not under others or anything like that. So, yeah, don't know. Um, I think they might be a mod. I, I Someone's going to say, oh, at X timestamp, you scrolled right past it. So, uh, yeah, if I did, please do. Please put the timestamp in uh, exactly then where I uh, I missed it. And uh, I might have another look afterwards. Just make sure I'm not going crazy. But, yeah, I can't I can't find the, uh, the lime silos. They don't seem to be there. There are ones on here, and we could go and run down and grab it from there. Or fill a trailer and, and grab it from there would be the other way to do it. Uh, and uh, which is which is a way that lime is done uh, very much is a way that lime is done you know uh, dumped on the side of a field and then uh, a bucket is used to uh, to fill a trailer I do not have a big enough bucket um, or a big enough tractor to do that unfortunately that would take a telehandler or a, a wheel load or something like that so uh, yeah much as I would love to uh, we're not in a position for that. I'm not sure if we need this New Holland trailer anymore as well. It's a lovely little trailer, but uh, as long as we have our big flatbed, it doesn't work properly on this weight on the back. It it sits too high with it, and it's uh, and therefore it's not massively useful to me. I need something that that sits in the right place on this, and uh, I think. Switching it for something like a dollied trailer would probably be a much better choice. So uh, if I could get an old dolly trailer, that would be really useful. So we've got rid of the potatoes now. Let's get a whole load of sunflowers output from here. And this, of course, is the production uh, extended production mod that allows me to do this. So open production menu. Uh, we want to select the sunflowers on here. We want to spawn items. We can 
Uh, I was going to say, we've got 5,000. So, yeah. Yeah, let's spawn five pallets of this. We've got so much corn in here. Um, but that's fine. Corn is, corn is our main feed for the pigs. Corn is, is the main thing we want to be feeding them. So, uh, yeah, I don't mind having a lot of that. What we might have to do, though, is uh, spawn a whole load of pallets and then fill up a trailer from those pallets rather than um, just taking pallets over. Otherwise, we will be forever doing 20,000 litres from this garden. And uh, however many litres we've got sitting in the other garden. In it goes. Right, let's take these two over. And then uh, we'll come back for the next two. Final one of these pallets. Uh, let's bring this round here. And out and in. Oh, come on. We can get this to work. There we go. Oh, no. Almost can't see the tips of my whoa of my uh forks makes it very difficult sometimes through this bush down lift it off the floor slightly and there we go that's got it it's not wholly straight but it's on there and uh yeah this will top up uh the protein level of pig feed rather nicely uh, i'm actually quite happy we despite the initial problems we had today which i'm i'm not happy about uh the fact that we well i don't want to use herbicide on my crops the pigs are actually fairly good uh yeah we've we've upped the amount of protein they've got uh the grain is slowly coming down um, we put all of our wheat into there this year. Uh, base food is at an okay level. Um, and they are at maximum capacity for food now, just about. So, uh, yeah, we'll just keep topping it up as the wheat falls. Uh, we will keep topping the others up. And, uh, and that will mean our pigs will keep being as productive as possible. And, uh, yeah, they are definitely getting through feed a little bit quicker now. And it looks like our tractor is on to uh, the headlands, which is great because uh, it is gone or it's coming up to half past six. So looks like we will get this field finished today, which is fantastic news. It's coming up to seven o'clock here now on, uh, on Attingham Park. And we are very near the end of this field. We're going to work into the evening to get it finished, uh, which is great. I've also just realized neither of the fields that we did uh, today have been rolled. And in actual fact, I'm fairly sure as well that we may not have rolled our first field of, uh, or our field of wheat either. So I need to get the rollers out and I need to get them done. And so that is going to go well into the night uh, to get that done. But uh, at least we caught it and at least we can get it done before the day ticks over. So hopefully should have that done uh, by next time as well. Uh, a little bit of off camera work, which I don't often do, but uh, in some instances are absolutely necessary. It does mean next day, all of our tractors are going to be in use because we're going to need to get a uh, we're going to need a roller running behind this uh, doing field 12, um, which is uh, yeah going to be very interesting, uh, and um, we're going to have to get the hoe out on uh, the fields that we've planted over the last couple of days as well. So uh, lots and lots still to be done on the farm. Uh, it is a very busy period of time. Today, we are going to be getting on with the seeding. We have field 12C to get started with the canola. Um, and we want to get that field knocked out today. Uh, we're also going to have to get a roller running behind it. Because, uh, as I said last time, uh, my big mistake on the three fields that we had already... Uh, was that I forgot to roll them. Thankfully, went well into the night and all three fields got rolled. 
uh, so they are all okay. We do need to get rid of the weeds in those today so that we don't end up with the same problem as we've got on fields like the wheat field to my right. Um, so yeah, we're going to be running the hoe in this tractor in the near future. First though, I wanted to get the big bags down here to this field. Uh, we are going to need quite a bit of this um, uh, of this fertilizer down here, I think. We're down to just £243, though. So uh, we might have a problem here. Uh, we thankfully do not need quite so much uh, on here. So let's take that down. Uh, yeah, uh, 140 should be enough to do it. Uh, let's close that back up and uh, we also want to make sure that we turn off the automatic feed rate as well and then once we've done that we need to yeah we need a medium i think we actually need a high seed rate first so let's get off the edge here it should tell me once i get into this field uh, and then we're going to set up a course play course to do this there we are moving off and seed rates actually medium seed rate should do us fairly well we do need a higher amount of fertilizer though um so that will cover this field quite nicely and uh yeah so back to this corner this is where we want it to finish up and as that's the case let's bring this up and clear the current course uh create a new one Again, number of headlands three, multiple tools three. Uh, we are exactly where we want for this to generate. So generate me a course. So there we go. That is much better and uh, and will run uh, much more nicely. And it's starting in that bottom corner. So let's head down there. Okay, I've adjusted the amount of fertilizer it's going to use because... Well, there's a lot of variety on this field, and I want it to be... Uh, yeah, we, we, we don't have the automatic application on this uh, because of the age of our equipment. So let's take that, and away you go. And yeah, we want it to do uh, canola again on here, so straight in that goes, and oh, this is going to be full of weeds as well. Speaking of weeds, our newly planted fields are absolutely jam-packed with them. So that is what I need to turn around and do for today. Uh, we can't, as I said, we can't do anything about the weeds that are in the two wheat fields that we planted earlier on. Uh, but we can go through the three fields we planted in, April, uh, in March and get them sorted. So we'll head around the back here. Uh, we set this tractor up with the care wheels previously to do this with. So just back that to there. Do that. And away we go. My biggest worry, actually, looking at this, is we only have 300 odd pounds. I don't know how far that will get us with our hired worker through field 12C. And... I think we might end up having to sell something or we should get some money in actually we should get some money in from our uh from our fishing uh rentals so with any luck it's not going to be a big problem and uh, and we can just keep going but uh, it does worry me a little bit let's unfold this though and this time i'm hoping this will be more successful down it goes and let's see are we getting rid of all the weeds this is a hoe and not just a weeder so yeah that's much better so they had grown too big in those other fields in these fields they haven't yet so uh, we are going to be able to clear these out and get this done and uh, have at least three fields so far that are nicely weed free the thing that annoyed me about those two uh, wheat fields was that I had all winter to sort out the issue on them and ended up not doing it 
and leaving it until our seeding window opened, which is, of course, when those weeds grew up and became more stubborn and we could no longer get rid of them with this. So uh, it is a little bit annoying that, and I kind of wish I'd done something about it earlier. Uh, but uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, at, at least with this, at least now that we're on here and doing this, uh, we shouldn't have that problem on any of our other fields. And, uh, and we should get a nice, uh, clean crop from everywhere else. Especially on these fields where we are solid loam. We really, really want to be avoiding having any weeds and, and maximizing how much we get off these. Uh, the amount we're going to get off uh, of canola off these fields this year is going to be brilliant. And the end of the year is going to make a big, big difference in uh, in how much we get in. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where we're going to be targeting more fields and trying to get more stuff done. And uh, it's getting scary because we are at that point where many more fields i mean one more field each is gonna take a day or two to get sorted and we may end up having to either have two seeders going uh extending our stuff by a day so that we get an extra day a month to do things or um, getting bigger equipment and starting to upgrade that. Although our cedar is not small. You know, if we've got a decent sized cedar on it. Um, but our fields are very much getting to the kind of numbers where we need to be doing, or where we'll need to be doing multiples per day and uh, hopefully not running out of anything uh, when we come to do it. Because otherwise, we really are going to be stuck. Um, at the moment, it's going well. We are on target. We are looking at being in a very good place. And uh, we are going to be turning things around pretty well come uh, the end of the year. We've got a good rhythm going. And I'm really quite happy with how well things are running. Um, we'll see whether we manage to get everything seeded in time. We've got till the end of next month to get everything in. Uh, canola needs to be finished this month. So by the end of April, uh, we need to get our two fields, our remaining. In fact, we only have one field of canola to get planted by the end of April. And it is one that's currently being planted. So after that, we are into our sorghum planting. And uh, yeah, if we hit that today, if we start getting onto one of our other fields for sorghum that is going to be huge because then we are ahead of schedule and we have a good idea of exactly how much space we have in our timings to uh to get extra fields done uh, and in fact we, we know we've got some extra timing because we had field uh 2a planted with spring wheat whereas normally uh that being a wheat field would have gone in in the winter so uh yeah we have uh, we have space in our schedule to add another couple of fields if we really wanted to just this last little bit to do down the left hand side and then field one is weed free and this job is done which is fantastic so there we go first field done we're going to move on to 2a and the spring wheat and get that's done now which is just the other side of this hedge uh, there is something about uh field two though that i have missed uh, which is not great and i noticed it as i was rolling all of these crops in um into the night uh, after the last episode uh basically uh the stones didn't all disappear so uh, there are still quite a few medium and large stones in the field in fact there's still some small stones in the field for some reason it missed a few uh, but yeah you can see there's quite a few patches of the medium stones in the field so not much i can do about that Two uh, field 2a we got all of them uh all of the small stones except for that patch there field 2b it missed some so yeah, we, uh, we have quite a few stones left in these fields. And uh, while rolling will get rid of some of them, uh, it's not going to get rid of all of them. 
Uh, and it didn't get rid of all of them. So uh, there will be a little bit of damage to some of our equipment over time. Uh, I think after this year, we might have to uh, get the power harrow on here, uh, go through the field, get that done, and then destone it afterwards. Uh, simply to, to try and clear the stones out of this field and get it done. I think we'll have time, certainly on the two fields here that will be canola and sorghum. Uh, so this field here, 2A, will be easy enough. And uh, to actually, and 2B will be easy enough. The one that we'll have more trouble with is 2C. But... Uh, we have plenty of time to deal with that this year. So uh, I think what we might do is hire a stone picker, sort out uh, 2C, so get the power harrow on it, sort out 2C, and um, yeah, then this will all be sorted after this year's harvest, which would be perfect. Cedar has run out of fertilizer and while i'm down here i'm going to refill it with some seed as well because it's getting a little bit low on that too so let's head out here and get this refilled let's just pop out and open that up yep down goes that and up comes the seed uh phrase seed banks and we'll get those filled up with some of this there we go so that will top the seeds up for some reason i seem to have a lot of half filled seed bags back at the farm so um yeah we need to kind of use them up a little bit uh i'm also looking for a dolly trailer an old dolly trailer that i can use um because while this trailer is great and i and i love it it does not work with this tractor setup Ideally, we want to be able to load big bags on with the weight on the back of here, hook up the trailer and take it out to the field. I can't do that with this trailer, um, unfortunately. It's great for stacking bales when we need to um, and holds a lot of bales for us. It is not great at uh, getting big bags down to the field. And the little new Holland trailer we've got isn't, isn't quite right either. So I think I want a dolly. Uh, I think a dolly is going to be a necessary trailer for going forwards. And uh, and I'm looking out for that. And I quite like one that's inexpensive at the moment because we do not have a lot of money. So uh, it would be good if we could uh, get away without that. Right, close that up. Start this up. Reverse it up a little bit because I can see where it's failed to put in fertilizer. And start it going again. There we go. And away it goes. I'm quite enthused to see the uh, progress we're making on field 12C. Uh, my biggest worry is that it doesn't get finished. Uh, it is our biggest field and I'm not too worried if it didn't get finished today. But obviously the longer it goes into the next day, the more it, uh, more it eats into planting the next field but the, the fact that it's it seems to be about halfway through and we're about halfway through the day is fantastic news um, i'm quite happy with that i've just uh, seen uh, a minute ago field 15 the biggest field on this map the one that is behind us there that is up for auction um how much is it up for auction at let's have a look um oh wow the yield potential is insane a hundred and thirty three thousand that is so cheap i'd end up with about six fields out of that uh 133 000 is insanely cheap that as a comparison that's almost as much as we paid for field two for the biggest field on the map uh we are not gonna get anywhere near being able to uh raise the money for that but and plus, I don't really know what I'd do if I did. I mean, let, if we have a look in here. So I paid, let's see, how much is this worth? 156,000 we paid for that. And field 15 is currently going for 133. We could sell field two and buy field 15. Uh, and, and 
yeah, and would take forever to do anything on it. But that is that is crazy. That is just an awesome, awesome price for that field, uh, and uh, and would just make us so much money planting that. I'd never be able to afford the equipment to pro farm it properly though, because it would take forever to do anything on it. Yeah, we think field 12 is big. Field 15 is ginormous. While I've been working my way through this field, I've been wondering if there's some way I could actually buy field 15. I mean, it would be immensely difficult to work it and, uh, and we'd probably have to change our entire farm setup if I was to buy it because, yeah, we do not have the equipment set up to, uh, to do that. Uh, what I would need is uh, I probably need to sell field six. So having never put a single crop in field six, we could sell that for, uh, let's have a look, um, 85,000. So that would certainly get us a good chunk of the way there to bid on that. Um, but I'm not sure if we could... By field 15, where are we? We would have to... I think we'd have to sell a combine or something as well. What have we got in here? Uh, Harvester is worth 14,000. We, we'd need 50,000 to do it. I don't think we have any one or two pieces of equipment. Uh, that's not our teletruck uh, that would do it. <laughs> we do. We have a piece of equipment we could sell that is our most expensive tractor. Uh, is the tractor we're not using. And between that and field uh, six, we would pretty much be able to afford field 15. I, I would normally ask you guys what you think, but unfortunately, because I'm away, I'm having to uh, pre record all of these videos uh, i think it kind of depends on how long that auction is left and we will see where that is when they when uh we do the next video but uh yeah there's a good opportunity there to get that very sizable feel and that would change everything that would have to be uh, we'd have to sell the combine anyway because we'd need something bigger to run um, on our fields. Even if we we had that, we would yeah we would need a bigger combine uh, to run on the farm. So we'd have to lease that each year, or at least lease it for the first year. Because the amount of crop, the amount of money we'd make off that field on a fully loamed field, that would be insane. So uh, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to be interesting because we'll see where we are and we'll see whether it's even possible. And that has got field 2A weed free though. So I'm very happy with that. And we can now go on to uh, 2B. You can see the stones here though in 2C. There are, yeah, there are a lot of stones. I want to get, uh, I think we'll go and get the, uh, go and get our other bit of kit, um, our uh, county, and we'll get that doing, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that uh, cultivating this. Uh, that way we'll be able to get the, the stone over it and, uh, and get that done. Uh, for now, what I want to do is set up a course play course here. So we'll get this field done as well. Um, let's uh, open that. Generate me a course. And that's going to stop at that corner and start at the bottom corner, which is fine. So actually, let's um, let's rework that a little bit. I don't want it to, to stop at, uh, at the corner I went to. Let's uh, restart that. So where I'm looking for it to do is create job, open generator, 
uh, let's close generator actually. We want to set the target position of here. We want to set the field position of here. Target position that way. And open the course generator and generate me a field work course. There we go. And stop at the do it at the top corner. And this was just rolling its way down the hill then. Uh, which wasn't great. But it has uh, we can now set up and we want to be the opposite corner to where we are now. So that will set up nicely. Let's get this going. Line it up. And away you go. Looks like our cedar needs refilling. Yep, it is out of nitrogen again, out of fertilizer. So let's grab the double top off the back of here and refill it. It's quite a heavy amount of nitrogen we're having to put on all of our fields here. Uh, I... Um, I don't know the best way to go about this. We need to, we've got 40,000 liters of slurry, uh, but that is not going to go very far on this many fields, unfortunately. Uh, as I was saying last time, I'm hoping that our pigs will continue to produce piglets. And as a result, we will be able to, uh, well, and then we'll keep producing slurry uh, at the moment, though, it's it's not going to go very far on how many fields we've got. Especially if we ended up getting field 15. That would that would just not go far at all. Right, another bag of that in. Uh, close that up. Start our engine. I don't know if that will be enough to do the rest of the field. It's certainly not going through the... Uh, <laughs> not going through the... Um, seeds very fast so we're all right from that point of view and that's partly because canola seeds are quite small and partly because you don't need as many of them in uh this silty clay as you uh, as you do for uh the wheat so that's that's actually pretty good i'm quite happy with that um yeah we'll put this at the side of the field and i need to go and get the county and yeah let's go get the equipment on the back of that to redo the cultivating on field 2c so we can get rid of the stones i can't believe this is actually our most expensive tractor on the farm oh it's it, it, it's only forty three thousand, but that's still i'm uh, i'm amazed because it's the tractor i use the least it's probably the least my least favorite of the ones we have got on the farm and, uh, and as a result, I don't tend to uh, to use it that much. It was like the last thing I must have used it on was... Oh, maybe it was for seeding that I used this last. Uh, because it is covered in lime dust still. So, yeah. That's not great. Oh, wow. Let's get this into here. I don't know why I did store it. I think I stored the flatbed at the end here, actually. Which we're not doing anymore. So... This uh, roller can go up here. We're going to need to get this roller out, of course, uh, once the uh, once the uh, seeding has finished on field 12C. And we'll probably do that with 7810, which means that this will come into play at that point. And, and yeah, uh, whether we go for field 15, that is a big question. There are, it would make us so much money. That's the trouble. Do I run before I can walk and go and do field 15? Or do I say, oh, it's only 133,000, but I don't have the equipment to run it. Whichever way I go on that, it's going to be interesting. Now, but yeah, I can see what the last field I did with this tractor was. It's still got the course play course on it. Right. No course. Let's go with three, one, sharp. Yep. And generate me a course. Perfect. Uh, let's head up to that top corner then. It'll finish uh, down this bottom corner here. Perfectly where I've come into the field. 
And that's actually how I think I want to generate courses going forwards. Come in at the point where I want to exit. Sit on the field at that point there and generate the course there. It will work perfectly for me for setting up courses. As we've seen, really quick way of doing it. Uh, I don't have to select field or set up anything like that. And I think that's part of the new course play setup that got released last week on uh, on the mod hubs. So, uh, yeah, that makes me actually quite happy to see that. And make things really, really easy. Right, first waypoint and away you go. And, yep, yeah, turn this field uh, into something I can actually go and pick up the stones from. I forget that we have a half a million pound loan on our farm. And I was just checking that then. This is one of my playthroughs in which we, we do have a loan and do have the uh, ability to borrow money. Um, mainly because this is a start from scratch playthrough and uh, we do get uh, a... Well, we start off with a, a £200,000 loan. We borrowed a load more to set ourselves up and actually it's paid off so far that I'm... Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I I don't know where to go with this. Such a big field, I never expected to turn up, and uh, and it's and it's really kind of thrown me for a loop on here uh, as to uh, what I should decide. It feels to me like it'll be too much work. It feels to me like I won't be able to take full advantage of it this first year, and uh, and as a result, will end up. Um, mm -hmm not being uh, not getting everything done i want to get done this year on the other hand it feels like a massive opportunity uh that uh going forward will make a big difference to the farm and actually grow the farm massively so um yeah i uh i think what i need to do is i need to check where everything is uh exactly how much money we have kicking around I don't want to borrow money if I can avoid it, um, but money is there. I can, seeing as we've expanded the farm, uh, we've got a little bit more cash. So uh, yeah, I could borrow a little bit of money to do it. And even if I didn't borrow money to do it, I think we'd have to borrow money to at least lease a new tractor. Ah, uh, and it would change the whole character of this series because we'd need something bigger and more modern to work that field. Um, certainly much, much bigger than our current county or any of these are because these are all 125 horsepower tractors we're running this farm with. We're going to need something well into the 200 horsepower range, if not bigger, to, uh, to work that field. That is not a small field. And even if I split it into smaller ones, that's almost... Well, if I split it into smaller ones, that's going to double the amount of fields we have on the farm. Which we have no hope of farming this year. One positive thing to note out of that, however, is I'm not worried about my current fields. I'm not worried about the fields we have. I'm worrying about a field I don't have because the fields we have aren't concerning me at the moment we are so nicely on target at the moment with our farm right now we've got this field done and we need to go and refill our tractor and uh give this all a wash because we are now weed free on all the fields that we can be weed free at the moment um we are nearly finished seeding field 12c i think that we're certainly on the headlands with the cedar so that's good news um and we'll soon have 2c de-stoned which is great because we're going to be wanting to see that in the near future with some sorghum um which will be uh, fantastic uh, everything else though that is a bonus uh, that would uh, make a big difference we are going to be out rolling in the 7810 tomorrow uh, we need to get uh, 
the seeds we've got on field 12C all rolled in, um, plus any seeds we have anywhere else. So that is going to have to be an early start for this tractor in order to do that. And let's refill this. Can I refill it? Oh, I need to stop the tractor, don't I? Yeah. Otherwise, it won't refill it. But will it not just refill it? Let's back it up. There we go. There we are. Refill the tractor. And uh, yeah, so that uh, this is going to be doing a whole load of re uh, of rolling. This tractor here, this will be continuing on doing this field so that we can go and get the stones out of it and run a de-stoner on it before it gets planted in a couple of days. Which means that this tractor will be heading round field uh, 12A to get that planted with our first lot of sorghum. There's some stones in this field as well. Uh, that's slightly annoying. We're going to have to watch out for those and get those fixed in the near future. Uh, this tractor, though, has one more round of the field to go and then it will be done for the evening. Today, we are going to be continuing our seeding. We've got uh, the sorghum to get started with. So we're going to be loading up our seeder here with a whole load of seed and fertilizer and getting that started. Um, we've got a little bit left in the shed here. Um, but in fact, it's all... Well, it's all seed we've got in the shed here. So I'm trying to clear out some of these smaller bags that we've got and uh, and get them done. Uh, we also need to get our fields rolled. So we're going to be rolling field 12C today and, uh, and getting that sorted. Um, and we need to continue working on field 2C and getting that sorted as well. Because at the moment... Uh, that is full of stones and I want to clear it out before we get uh, any sorghum into it. Biggest problem we have, as you can probably see, is that we are out of money, uh, which is a big, big problem. So what I'm going to do is something that I don't want to do, uh, but we need to do it to get make sure we stay on track for our seeding. Uh, as we have recently bought some fields, we are able to borrow a little bit of money. So we're going to borrow 5,000 to get this done. And then hopefully in the uh, in the gap that we have between our fields being ready and the uh, and, and everything sort of... Uh, sorry, between us seeding and our fields being ready to harvest, uh, we should get a nice window where we are going to be able to... Uh, go and earn some money for some contracts and sort of sort ourselves out. So that's the plan for today. I am going to also leave this seed bag on the front of here so that I can connect up to the trailer and not have the trailer wheelie. Somebody suggested it in the comments of one of my videos this week and I thought that is an absolutely brilliant idea. Uh, get a counterweight on the front and stop my uh, whole tractor going backwards sort of make everything even out so that's uh that's what we're going to do going forward with these and with pulling uh trailers and stuff about uh this is the field that we need to get going so i'm just going to take this down to here and then we'll run back up to the farm and get the cedar so start this up we want to pop out and just close all of this down there we go, close the back, close the front. And uh, then, yeah, we can get this out to the field. And uh, as I said, we're going to have to borrow 5,000, really, to get today's work done. It should be all right. I'm, uh, I will get some money back anyway today. And if we find at the end of the day that we have 5,000 again, um, because our... Uh, our fishing area has brought in a load of money then uh, then we can do that and we can go from there but uh yeah we are on to the sorghum planting now which uh, i'm very happy about i'm actually really really pleased that we're moving on to this midway through april we've so far got fields uh one 2b and 12c planted with canola we've got 2a 3 and 12b planted uh, with wheat uh, so 12a and 2c are both going to be wheat 
um, and probably Field 6 as well. And the reason for that is, has Field 16 been planted with something? That would be awesome. So Field 15 is still up for auction. It's got another four and a half days. So we have four and a half days to earn the money to buy Field 15. Let's get this started in here, though. Let's uh, create job. Oh, that's that's not working. Let's move into here. Right. No course. Right. There we go. So that's how you want to do it. Come in here, create the course from there. Uh, and that should fit everything. Uh, generate the field work course should finish in this corner. Yep. Perfect place. And then. We want to come into here and we're going to borrow 5,000 to take us to 505,000. We ran out of money at the end of the previous day as this came to the last row. It was very, very annoying. So looking at the amount of uh, nitrogen we need on here, it's, well, it's, yeah, we could possibly bring it down a little bit. We bring it down to sort of there-ish. N also uh, alters things. Um, then, yeah, it's that that should even things out a little bit. We're, we're in a bad area and it's just a little bit down. So I think we'll be all right. I think we should be able to get this to work here. Sorghum does not need quite as much, although it does need more than some other crops. And nearest waypoint is right in front of us. Let's set this going on the sorghum. And that is the first job going. Oh, and again, standing in his way. No, nope. no, no, no. Let's try that again. This time with... Yeah, I can see where I went wrong. It got hold of that, that point there. So we want to start it here. If I get it on this line and a little bit into it, that should do better. So go there and away it goes and i've also found out why this function wasn't available on here for our last few videos on attingham um because i hadn't updated course play so now that i have we've got the extra features and uh and we're all go so with that started off we can kick this off this will just continue on the course that we started it on yesterday and that means the county is going through and getting this field ready for us to hopefully get a destoner on it later today. Meanwhile, we want to head over here with our 7810 and hook this up to the rollers because that's the job that we're going to be doing. So we're going to get onto these rollers, uh, head up to 12C and get that field started. And, uh, and work on there and save ourselves a little bit of money on the hired workers by doing that. And we are moving very much into a fully working farm here, as you can see now, because we do need multiple workers to, to make sure that everything's working. So uh, I'm quite happy with this. This feels like a very functional farm. Uh, we're going to need a fairly big contract, I think to go and get field uh field 15 my best bet for that i think is probably to go and try and do some sort of silage contract so uh that's what my aim is going to be when we have a look in uh, a couple of days and, uh, and try and get that working or if we can get it working maybe next game day because it will be early may and the only thing we'll have to do is uh, get these fields weeded. So we should have a tractor free at that point. Um, then we'll be able to go and uh, maybe try and earn some cash and see if we can raise enough money to go and do that. Uh, my biggest concern is the fact that it's going to be post seeding window. But... As I was saying a moment ago, field 15 very much looks like it's got a crop in it. It does. And to me, that looks like corn. That is a massive field of corn now. So, uh, yeah, we are in a position, I think, where we could do that. We could then go and grab uh, or hire a very large combine uh, during the harvest season. 
and uh, and go and um, harvest that and see if we could make a whole load of money uh, because that would be amazing. In fact, if we're lucky, what we could do is just hire a header and use a hired combine from a different contract, maybe, to uh, to do that job. And uh, and yeah, go from there. I think we'll see how we go, but I think there is a lot of potential. Whereas here, we've got a few stones. And the one thing that worries me today is that uh, we could end up with getting this field rolled, but not field 12A. If that gets fully planted um, and we can't roll it, uh, then we're going to have a problem. We, we really need to be on top of that. Um, so uh, we're going to keep keeping a close eye on how long this takes, how far we get through it. If we are through by midday, that would be excellent. If we're through by 1 p.m., that's doable. Uh, beyond 1 p.m., I think we might start having a problem. So uh, we're going nine miles an hour. We are going at a fair rate. Uh, this is a very big field, though, and, uh, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out. So with four days to go, looking at the current price, the current price is 127,000 uh, for field 15. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty exceptional. Um, at the moment, though, there's not many, uh, many actual uh, contracts out there for us to earn any money. So I'm very much thinking we're going to be looking at silage stuff maybe May, uh, June time. I'm going to have to go back over those couple of bits there. Let's just reverse this up. Make sure that we uh, roll everything. Um, but yeah, we're, we're looking at sort of May, June, I think, in order to, uh, to properly cover uh, that. And this thing is impossible to reverse. Let's, let's get it a bit further. There we go. You, I could just go straight back over it, but destroy all my nice straight lines, which I am, in fairness, doing anyway. Um, but yeah, so if we get in the middle of the sort of the silage season of, of May and June a, uh, a really good amount, uh, then we should be able to go around, get a little bit of follow me going, get one of our own tractors following behind uh, any silage setup and easily get around fairly quickly especially if we can get one with the self-propelled baler so uh, i'm i'm going to be very much looking out for that kind of contract get a big follow me convoy going round field and make sure that we can uh, we can get the most out of it and, uh, and and make a really really big amount of money and hopefully buy field 15 I think it will be an absolute game changer for this series. I think it's going to revolutionize the farm. We will still have some of these older Fords kicking around, but I think we're going to end up with some much bigger equipment to try and cover such a big field. As usually seems to happen around here, our cedar has run out of uh, fertilizer. So we're going to go and grab our bag of that and take it out to the field i think we might have to go and buy more fertilizer there today we are yeah not a whole way through this field and we are definitely in need of fertilizer on here it's also turning out to be a fairly wet and horrible day so let's bring this in here yeah we are gonna have to borrow a load of money i think to get ourselves through uh, this year's seeding season, which if I can pay it back fairly quickly, I will. Um, as I said, taking on field two has given us a little more collateral, a little more land we can borrow against. As long as we're only borrowing a very little bit, uh, we should be fine. Um, this is not a very little bit, though, uh, at the moment. Well, this is not a very little bit of field left at the moment. We really, really need to uh, to be getting back into this and, and getting some more fertilizer i think so that is off and can get going i think i'm going to set a hired worker doing the rolling because we're going to have to head down to the shop i think we're going to have to borrow a little bit more money and go and get some more bags of fertilizer 
otherwise we are most definitely going to run out. You see, this tractor, with nothing on the back of this trailer pretty much, has no issues at all with weight. So it is very much we need to offset the weight of our weight on the back of here uh, in order to make sure that that isn't causing us an issue. So if we park this here, I think, and disconnect that, and then we put this bag of seeds that we've got on the front. That should work out fairly well for us. So grab that. Yep. And then that gives us a nice bit of weight on the front of here uh, to act as ballast um, against whatever we put on the trailer. And then uh, we can go and buy some bags of fertilizer now we had six bags of fertilizer i think it was uh to do the last lot so let's go and see how much six bags of fertilizer is going to cost us so again we're going to go with the double top and so take that down to six uh we're going to need ten thousand so i think we're going to need to borrow another ten thousand pound to get us through the rest of our seeding Go into the bank, and yeah, I really didn't want to do this. We are now 15,000 we borrowed to get through the end of our seeding season. And so uh, another six bags should do it. There we go. 10,920. We've got 12,500. Let's buy that. Yes. And yeah. So not great, but uh, hopefully we're going to be all right. Let's get these loaded up with our great little JCB Teletruck. We can do two at a time with this as opposed to just the single one uh, if we use our bag lifter on the front of the tractor. And I'm very much hoping that the uh, ballast bag on the front is going to make a big difference to how well this trailer works uh, with this tractor. The other thing I'm doing to try and help the balance of our tractor and our trailer together is putting all the weight from these bags over the wheels so the idea is that the weight sits on the wheels and not on the hitch here so it doesn't make the tractor rise up so if i now just strap those all down and uh, come here and we'll just put the weight of that forwards and just drop it off you see, we're actually not got a huge problem carrying this. Um, I do want to have this bag on the front for ballast. It will help us a little bit. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's get the tally truck put away because that does not belong out here. Uh, it belongs in the shed as it belongs to the garage or belongs to the, uh, the agricultural engineers here. And we're going to get this back out to the field and be ready for the next time that our tractor needs to uh, be refilled with some fertilizer because that is definitely going to happen before it needs to be refilled with seed so i said earlier on that a good measure of how well we were doing today would be how far through this field are we by between sort of midday and 1 p.m uh, could we finish this field and move on to the next one uh, the answer to that is actually a resounding no. Um, we, it is seven minutes to one. Uh, we are about halfway through field 12C. And uh, yeah, we've still got quite a way to go on here in order to make sure uh, that this field is done. I think the result of that is actually going to be uh, to go to be going into the evening on this and uh probably beyond where we uh where we record today just going through and getting this field done why am i am i unable to stay on this line here and keep uh keep from straying too far off i don't know uh but we are getting through it we are cracking on with it looks like i need to go and refill my cedar though so uh i'm off to do that again our cedar is getting through the uh, nitrogen 
the fertilizer here quite quickly. That did not go very far before that ran out again. Uh, it's when we reload it with this, it only reloads it about three quarters. So uh, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, let's come here and open this up. And then you can put this into here. The seeds, it still has plenty of. Uh, it is purely the amount of fertilizer it's using on here. If I just jump into this tractor, uh, you can see it is putting quite a bit of fertilizer on here. We're fairly low on this field. 76% uh, is what it puts down uh, from a single bag of fertilizer. And you can stand on the back like that as well. So let's back this off. And then uh, start this up and back this off. Come on, backwards. There we go. And then uh, nearest waypoint. And away it goes again. And yeah, hopefully uh, we won't have to fill this up again too soon. Although with the amount it's using... Uh, I don't know. I think it probably we'll need another bag or two uh, before we can finish this field. To be honest, this was always going to be a difficult field to get rolled in a day, uh, especially with the equipment we've got. I think the moral of this is probably start rolling same day as you seed. Uh, it just means that you're not racing uh, to, to get work that's backed up finished. Uh, and if things didn't change over the next month, I mean, I would roll a day behind I, that I, I seed all the time. Uh, but it doesn't quite work like that, so we need to um, we need to get ourselves in a position where we are able to do this a little bit better. And I think, yeah, rolling straight behind when we're seeding is uh, would be a good way to go. This field is just about done. No, we've got a little bit left. Uh, we should get this field at least done by the end of the day. Uh, notwithstanding me missing little bits. Uh, and then... I had lifted that. There we go. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, into the evening, I think we're going to have to go and do 12A. So that it gets done before the next day. It's a whole load of work. Uh, but it does need doing. And then... When we come to the next game day, I think what we'll do is while we're seeding the last couple of fields of sorghum, we will immediately roll the fields behind them and uh, make sure that uh, we are in a good place uh, at the end of each day in order to uh, maximize our, our efficiency on the farm and, uh, and make sure that this doesn't happen again. We're not uh, having to work well into the evening in order to get everything done. We've just had a load of money go out because I've got course play sets to automatically repair vehicles uh, when when they're running, which probably isn't the best way to go. Uh, it's, it's taken £500 out of uh, my account and means that we are now in danger of not having enough money to finish today i need to uh is there a course place there is must be a course place setting that i can fix that with so let's just get this on a, a good trajectory and then i want to have a look in here course play uh, automatically repair uh don't repair there we go don't repair and fuel threshold good broken threshold yes okay oh that's not good right in changing that it did cause an issue so we are going to have to go and borrow another 5000 today it repaired all the equipment immediately so we'll borrow 5000 and then i need to restart uh this here so nearest waypoint start nearest waypoint start yeah that wasn't good but at least now our vehicles won't automatically repair yeah for some reason that was uh 
automatically, well, it had set to automatically repair at uh, 70%, which is not great. Uh, it, that's, I think, is why we ended up running out of money yesterday. Uh, it ended up uh, repairing the tractors and, uh, and keeping them going when normally I'd run them lower than that. I'd run them lower than 70%. So, uh, yeah, that's what happened with that. And uh, it's meant that we've had to borrow... Well, we've had to borrow 10,000 today just to make sure we had enough uh, stuff to... Enough fertilizer to do our field. Um, and the next couple of fields, to be honest. And then we needed to also... Uh, keep these running but we would probably have had plenty of money to do that keep our hired workers running uh, if we hadn't had a whole load of cost with uh, stuff being repaired so uh, yeah we'll uh, see where we go it looks like one of our machines is blocked that would be this one here yeah always happens in these corners uh, we find that they can't turn easily enough and uh, and they don't like the hedges. They, they count it as being blocked. Uh, especially this one that has zero turning circle. So start you going again. And that means this will be finished in a minute. As we will also be on here in a minute as well. That's really good news. So that gives us... That's half past four in the afternoon. Uh, this is complete. So what we'll be able to do is set this going into the evening and uh, get ourselves to the point where that other field is uh, gets rolled as well. It's not ideal. I would quite like to have not had to, uh, to set this tractor and get it to work in the evening. Uh, but there's not much choice. We need to we need to roll field 12A. So uh, that will uh, that will get the job done, and it'll only be one tractor we're having to run um, at that time. Looks like our cedar will be finished soon as well. That was running around the headlands, and I note that the county is absolutely finished. So next time, what we'll be doing is getting the county on some stone picking, uh, getting this on some weeding, and continuing planting with our 7830 here uh, oh sorry our 8340 here and that will then put us in a position where uh, everything here will be done uh, let's get this going from this side of the field I think and coming across here we're going to send this now behind our cedar because I think our cedar is on the last row. It is, yep. Yeah. So when that goes across there, what we can do is set this uh, following up behind it and uh, allowing it to finish off. And uh, yeah, this then can run into the evening and get this field rolled as well. Which will just be really, really good to get back on track. And then next time, we will make sure that we start rolling as early as we can with the next field. Now give that a good bit of a head start. And send a hired worker out. To get the job done as it switches between gears to try and get in the right one. Meanwhile, the county is finished. So this is long overdue for a good wash. So I want to get this back up to the farm and give it a good wash, uh, refuel it, and uh, yeah, that is uh, that is that job done. Uh, we want next time, as I said, to get uh, to hire a uh, stone picker, uh, get that field picked of stones so that we uh, we're able to go and seed it easily enough. And we'll all be good. Into the yard. Get these two bits done at the same time. There we go. So turn it off, actually. Right, then we can refuel it. And once it is nicely refueled, like so, 
grab this and give it a wash down. I think this is the cleanest this tractor has looked in a while, which is good. It's it's long overdue a wash this. It was uh, bright white from the lime when we uh, when we first got it out with this uh, power harrow on it. There we go. And of course, it wouldn't be the end of the day without our cedar needing refilling. It really has no distance left to go in the cedar, and yet it still needs a refill of fertilizer. We have still haven't refilled its seeds from the beginning of the day. Uh, it, it just goes through fertilizer like nothing else. Uh, let's open this up. Uh, yep, yeah, it's still got 347 liters of seed and no nitrogen. So let's fill that up. And then that should be enough to get this field finished for today. And uh, we're back on track. Or at least getting there. We still need to get it rolled. Close this up. Like that. Jump into our tractor. Back her up. And away it goes. And that should be finished in no time. So with our field seeded uh, the, uh, and us needing to now get this trailer out of here because we're not going to need this here and it will only be in the way of the roller as that works through this field. Uh, that is down and over there. So uh, yeah, that will just continue to go. Today we are going to be cracking on with doing some more seeding. Uh, we've got two fields to get weeded, so we're going to get the 7810 out on that straight away. Let's go with a course here for it. 12A, uh, yep, basically the same setup as before. Generate me a fieldwork course, and it's in. So there we go. Let's drop out of here, and where we're we going to start is over this corner over here yeah there it is so let's zoom out of here and get this to the first waypoint uh i'm gonna set it to first waypoint it is gonna do three headlands i don't think it necessarily needs to but uh, it will work fairly well for it and away that goes and yeah that is gonna clear through those weeds we're going to send it down to 12C after it finishes this field um, and get both of those out of the way. And that leads us over to here, which is field six. So field six needs doing. This is the other field we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to get the roller out over here as soon as we can. Uh, and we're going to put the other tractor on that. In fact, I've got a better idea. Let's go and get the county and get the county to do the seeding. And then we can come behind in the 8340 and do the rolling. Because this county is perfectly designed for doing the seeding. Uh, it's part of the reason we have it on the farm. And uh, and really, we should be putting it to good use. We can't put any care wheels on this. So it makes it a very difficult tractor to use for the weeding or anything like that. So, uh, oh, no, don't want to do that. Get that folded back up and head out. Oh, I seem to have got some. Yeah, there we go. Get the debug stuff off. And off we go up to the field. We've still got just over three days to go until Field 15's auction ends. Uh, we still only have £209. Uh, so, oh, wow. I think today we might have to borrow some money. We might be okay, I think. Uh, we might be in a position where the uh, where we make enough money per hour from our uh, from our fishing area to uh, to actually do this and uh, and make um, uh, and and keep things running. Well, so we'll see how things keep running there. First, I need to disconnect this. Completely forgot. I need to disable or I need to disable manual attach for this. So done that. And now we should be able to detach this. Let's see. Uh, switch over and detach. Yep. There we go. 
yeah it's slightly annoying i do want to get this fixed and get this changed uh i, I what it really needs is the trouble is it's this section here this doesn't unfold this is controlled by mouse control and i'd like it that it basically unfolds instead uh that would be so much nicer um but yeah unfortunately it's it's not set up that way and if you want to use manual attach uh you basically all the time that you're using this you need to have manual attach this uh well you basically just need to leave it on the tractor and then undo or turn off manual attach when uh when you want to disconnect it and reconnect it and then re-enable it afterwards so uh yeah that's that's what i'm having to do and uh we will probably leave it on the county now for a while in fact for the rest of this uh for the rest of this video i think i'm gonna leave manual attach off and then we can uh come back to it later come on into high and oh wow i seem to have confused gears there we go that's better and now we can use the roller behind with this uh with that going there so oh yeah and now i'm forgetting i don't have manual attach which is a little bit annoying right let's get this then onto here we have only 72 percent fertilizer and 39 percent sorghum i need to detach that trailer from here and we have seeds on the front perfect so we can uh, get this loaded up with the seeds and then probably grab a bag of fertilizer as well and top things up uh, that should see us through the rest of this field i think and then uh, we've only got the one field left to do i think um no this might be my last field this very much might be my last field oh no i have got one we've got to go and do some destoning which we're going to go and do with this later uh for now let's drop or let's get things out the way i'm shifting between stuff a lot at the moment but let's get things out the way we can then get this bag of seeds off the front of here switch it for a bag of fertilizer and then uh oops hold it there we go drop that bag off we'll grab the fertilizer off the back try not to make it move the whole trailer when we do so go off with that one and that one and maybe that one and that one as well right yeah bags of fertilizer three four bags of fertilizer here um and a single bag of seed i hope this is going to be enough for us to finish these fields uh, it should be we've not got far to go with this now and uh and once we got the sorghum in uh we're gonna be in a fantastic position close that up bring up this uh clear the existing course onto this three headlands will give us plenty of space and yeah liking everything else generate me a course exactly the course i expected uh will it get stuck on the hedgerows over this side uh this is a fairly awful field for that what i do need to check is our nitrogen level which of course we did a cover crop on this field last year so uh, we don't need to put quite as much nitrogen on here. Looks like we can get away with about 100 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Yep, this is uh, actually, this is a fairly good, I'm going to go slightly up because there are sections of this field that are lower. So yeah, if we get the olive green at the very least or get the olive green most of the way across this field, that will work oh our turning circle on this is as always awful i think the county is definitely the tractor i will be looking to replace first it was possibly going to be 
the tractor that got sold for field 15 as well right away we go we are doing sorghum and we are doing well that has got it i'm actually thinking rather than having the 8340 sit here we really should go and deal with those stones uh now we do have our money going up we've uh, we've got a little bit of money in from our fishing area uh, is it enough for us to lease a the stoner let's have a look uh that requires too much so 25000 can we lease that no so we are going to have to borrow some money to lease this and so let's head down to the shop uh we'll borrow a little bit of money we'll get that leased and then we'll go from there uh, it's only going to be doing one field and we can uh, probably clear that out fairly quickly today um, but that will then improve that field and in fact if we get the cheapest one uh, we probably can have it sitting there for a while no in fact we'll get the cheapest one we'll return it today because otherwise it's going to be sitting there for a year so down to the shop uh, yeah we are we are going up and down with our money like crazy at the moment and so as i said we need to go and borrow some cash it's good that we can actually borrow a little bit of money at the moment uh, it does not bode well for us though getting the uh, whole setup with field 15 if we're still having to borrow money at the moment let's lease this uh 1275 okay uh, but this does need doing and this is going to be our best bet for that it's a pity i can't go and get the stones off the uh, the other few fields that we had uh, that have managed to sprout some uh field 12 c has uh, has sprouted some as well which isn't good where are you getting stuck a little bit out to the side so uh, i want to watch that um yeah you're not folded out are you no you're not so we'll uh, we'll just get this down to the field and uh, and start getting these stones collected up down to the fields and back on the farm and our weeder is still going there in 12a uh, we want this field up here which is 2c i think it is uh, now i thought i'd uh, oh yeah let's clear this track off i thought i had defined a course for this but i'm not sure yeah no we had i have defined a course for this because we used it so yeah 161,969. i am not fighting to catch to get that field at the moment uh, I think we're in a, a, a place where that is going to be very, very difficult. Um, I do have a plan if we find ourselves with the money we need to, to get it, which I don't think we're going to at this point. Uh, basically, get two combine harvesters. Not trying to, to buy a big expensive one. We'll hire another small one and uh, with the, the same width, get a 12 meter header essentially going and uh yeah and and do that field uh with two combines would be good uh our lorry our truck should be able to handle it as well and uh we'd be able to to keep two combines going on off on that i think it's beyond us i i honestly think at this point point, hundred and sixty one thousand pounds the end of this year with all of our fields harvested and pay you know all of our money from our crops in and everything i think we might be might have been able to afford it as we stand at the moment nah, i think i think it's a pipe dream it was a nice idea but it's not one that's going to pay off i'm glad glad i didn't get the county working on this the turning circles at the end of the rows would have been too bad uh too small for its turn however we do have an issue with this and i think i might have to go and get something to sort it it's this because this is again one of those mods one of those tractors where the the hitch for the low attachment or the, the high attachment doesn't move it's dragging this section along the ground 
and uh, we can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to pop out here. Don't think there's anything that uh, we can do. Let's see. Uh, no, I can lift the stone picker. I can't do anything with a. I can open close HUD for course play yet. Yeah. But yeah, this is uh, this is not happening with this. Now there is a mod, and I think I might go and try and get it quickly. Now let's turn all of this off. That's actually folded everything up. Don't want to do that. Um, let's see if we can get the, the bar across here and attach it to that, because I think that would be a better way to go. So I've popped out. I've grabbed this, which is a trailer, uh, a lizard trailer attacher support mod. Uh, we're going to turn this on, disconnect that, and then just drive this forward a little bit. So that we can get this out the way. We'll attach this to the tractor. Uh, and I think this might also be the solution to our manual attach issue for the cedar. If we can connect the cedar via one of these as well, I think that we'll be in a really good place. Yeah, look at that. We can lower and raise that now on that attacher joint. And uh, perfect. Perfect. That is exactly what we needed. And uh, yeah, now our tractor isn't going to get stuck all the time because uh, the bottom of this or the, the, the bit we're pulling on this is getting stuck in the ground. I do. Nope, that is picking. Good. We're doing well then. Uh, let's get this field done. The only downside to using this county for this job is it is getting stuck along the hedgerow the whole way across this field um, because of its awful, awful turning circle. Uh, so every so often, I'm having to pop over here, get it running again, and uh, and get it sorted. Um, but it is almost there, and soon it'll be into the open field where it'll have a lot less problem turning around. I think I've settled into a good rhythm with the destoner, though. I am taking... Uh, well, I picked a row on the field and I'm just heading down that um, actually at quite some speed. This uh, this works at 13 miles an hour and is, uh, is not letting up. We are picking up not a huge amount of stones, I will say. We are, yeah, only 10% full at this point. So I'm not expecting a full uh, pickup off this whole field. Uh, that does mean that we have picked the right one. Uh, the cheapest one was definitely the way to go. And if I can keep this straight on here, then uh, it's, yeah, we're going to get everything picked up. And uh, without too much fuss, I'm quite happy. It's, uh, it's working well. And I could possibly have done with doing one more headland. Uh, I haven't quite got as much space to turn around, I think, as I would like. But... Um, yeah, otherwise, nothing to complain about. Oh, and look, the county's got blocked again. Yeah, it really doesn't like this hedge. Uh, I think we've probably got two more rows to go. Oh, it's, oh, it's beginning to flatten out a little bit. So uh, it's not too bad. But yeah, it, it doesn't turn with enough circle. And as a result, it, uh, it gets stuck on that hedge all the time. This is why we don't use this tractor quite so much. Having the choice between having to go and get the county away from the hedge every so often and trying to get it to work on this field, I am very pleased I went for the former and not the latter. It would have been, yeah, it really would not have been enough space to manoeuvre. Uh, and we'd have, uh, we'd have ended up with a, a really finicky setup here. Uh, yes, I do have to pop over to field six every so often and sort it. Although, as I said, I think it's uh, I think it's got to the point now where it's got past that issue. Um, and uh, yeah, we're about a third of the way through this field at this point. We've only got 16% full on this as well. So that is looking all good. I think our weeder is about ready to switch fields as well. Um, which is all good news. Uh, 
what I'd like to do today is have this field destoned and get our uh, and get our cedar back over here because uh, we want to be getting this field planted next day and once we've done that that will be our seeding on here completed for the year it'll also be all of our fertilizing because that will all be done and we can turn our attention to uh maybe the odd contract or two in june which would be perfect uh if we could get a contract or two in june uh, we would possibly get a whole load of money in. Uh, that is presuming, of course, at that point, our winter wheat isn't ready to harvest, which is a distinct possibility. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where we are in, uh, in a month's time. But if we can spend June doing a couple of nice big silage contracts, earning ourselves some money, uh, that would be pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, as I've said before, we are only three days away from uh, Field 15's auction ending. That is the last day of June. Partway through the last day of June, the auction for that field will end. And uh, if we've done a couple of silage contracts, especially a couple of big silage contracts, we may find we can afford it. Uh, if not... We may find we can afford something else. Our 7810 has finished work. So let's start this up. Let's clear the course off of that. And now I want to go and send this down to uh, 12C. Uh, because 12C, of course, uh, is our biggest field on the farm. And similarly, because we were seeding that last month, that also has a whole load of weeds in it. So I want to clear that out and get that done. Yeah, here's what I was talking about. The winter wheat is getting very tall at this point. So, uh, yeah, it's got some horrible weeds in it because of, uh, of the weeding problems we had with it at that time and the fact we didn't have this hoe. Um, but yeah, it's looking very, very nice at the moment and very tall. So we should get a nice crop of that. This is the field, though, that needs to be weeded next. Let's get it generated. And yeah. Uh, we... Oh, wow. It actually did it better than when uh, the cedar did it. So I'm quite happy with that. And we didn't have this on the cedar at the time, so uh, I don't quite understand why this gave me uh, an absolute uh, east-west. And last time, we had to actually get it to do it uh, slightly differently. Maybe it was the start point I chose. Anyway, the start point this time is over there. So we'll go around the edge of this field and get it into position. And then that can head around this field and it's moving quite quick through these fields so that is good news uh we want that uh, and of course the two fields we're doing this month are nowhere near as big as the two fields we did last month so um yeah we should be able to get uh this weeding done today and then the uh rolling done on six and two c uh, next game day we're about halfway through this job now and yeah we've only got 27 percent full on uh on the stones so there's not a huge amount of stones on this field it's just annoying that they're medium that's that's the that's the annoying thing about it um is that they won't roll in so i've got to run this over here just to get rid of them but it's it's only it's less than a thousand liters of stones at the moment so like before, like when we were having to do this in the past and uh, and clear the other fields off, uh, we are in a position where uh, there's no point in selling these. We might as well just uh, put them on the pile. We do have a pile of stones. Uh, we'll just shove them on the pile and, uh, and they can stay there uh, and just in the corner of the yard where we don't have much use for them eventually we might be able to to get a few together but it's only going to be a couple of thousand liters 
and uh, and I don't think it's really worth it. If we were doing a lot of plowing or, or dragging a lot of stones up every year, uh, I absolutely would think that this would be a job worth doing and uh, and and a job that would possibly make us money uh, to have a stone picker kicking around all the time. It isn't really though. We're 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 direct seeding. Uh, we've got better things to send, spend our money on than leasing one of these all the time and uh yeah i think when we come to do 2a and 2b um we just need to make sure when we come to do 2a and 2b uh we get them de-stoned before we go and plant them uh, again and uh, also that we go and grab the stones that we got kicking around on 12c from our ill-fated uh, attempts initially to divide field 12 and ended up having to plow up a bit of it uh, we've got some fairly big stones from that so uh, we need to go and sort those and sort that as well at that point um, but yeah we're flying along here I have no doubt we're going to get this all done by the end of the day we've got more rain on the way but I don't think that's going to affect anything we're doing and this is yeah we're now up to just a third full on this and into the last section of the field definitely been the best way to go doing this this way uh it means i've not had to deal with any tight turns uh, at either end or, or any issues like that it's all just sort of worked as i'd i'd hoped it would and uh, and just sort of breezed through this the mottling on this field is really weird considering that we uh, went through and did the uh, did the, the cultivating the power harrow through this um, it is very very odd uh, the way some of the uh, residue from the sugar beet is left and it's not on the headlands it's only in the middle of the field so uh, I'm not quite sure what what happened there uh, I'm wondering if it's something to do with the the state of the field but it's we did did we mulch this i think we did yeah we did we went to mulch this whole field so uh, it should be mulched as well i i don't know i honestly don't know why it's uh, such a strange setup or actually why it's a straight line at this end because that's not the headlands as a result that's uh, that's something else so uh, it's a little bit weird um but uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting the field too badly. Otherwise, uh, there's still stones on here. We've still got to clean them up. And so that is exactly what we're doing. And what do we think? 50% maybe full by the end of this? I think even that might be a stretch. 45, let's say. We've definitely had better coverage with fertilizer around here. Thanks to the cover crop we put in. Uh... This has made it all the way to this point uh, before it's needed refilling. So that's really good news. Uh, the worst problem I've got is that uh, my other tractor, my 7810, is saying it's in need of repairs. Uh, I'm going to try and get it moving again. And hopefully that's just a case of it conked out because it hit 50% and, uh, and had an issue. Right, let's open that up. Oh, do we need to? Nope, we're all right. Yeah, uh, let's get this here. And so I have had a thought about, uh, yeah, putting that, the, the same linkage we've got on the back of the uh, 8340 on the back of here and connecting this through this. My only worry is when this folds up, I'm wondering if it'll leave the linkage just uh, sitting there or whether it'll uh, actually fold the linkage up with it, which is what I would want from it. Um, I think we might have to give it a try and see if it works. Uh, and I'll have an experiment around with that for our last day of seeding. For now, let's send that off. And uh, yeah, get that going. See uh, if that can complete today. And in fact, it is seeding over the top of the last couple of bits of uh, the cover crop that got missed so yeah in future we shouldn't need to um 
uh, to come in with the uh, the power harrow if we uh, want to put a cover crop in just put the cover crop in and then go from there so as i said this on the other hand is telling me that it needs repairs so let's see if we can get it going again or whether it just conked out we will set you off again okay it just conked out it's fine hopefully it won't happen again before it finishes this field we're on our last couple of rows on the field and my estimate of uh 45 percent seems to be about right uh we've got this thin row here and then we've got a row at the end the rain is starting to fall as we tick over towards half past six as well um, but that's all good because all of our tractors are coming to the end of their jobs uh this one we should be able to get most of this row here whoa overshot uh we should be able to get most of this row in this pass uh we are getting a bit low on fuel with this tractor as well uh but yeah it's it's a fairly wide pass this but i think when we look at it afterwards uh we'll see that it has picked up all of the stones in it uh even though we're we're sort of running down the middle of it rather than um running right up to the edges if not i'm gonna have to go back down and this end bit is a little bit wider than i'd liked but i think that's got everything uh 46 percent wow i was pretty spot on stones wise though field 2c is now completely clear of them so uh 2b has a few left uh not too many 2a actually is fairly clear it's got a few large ones but it's it's all right uh 2b has lots of small stones in it and looks like we missed those during the rolling so uh, it's not too bad and these are the ones i was talking about on 12c so uh that's got a few as well uh you can see our 7810 going around the edge there and you can see the county going around the edge there so uh, all in all that's pretty good they are ending uh, oh, we need to go and drop these off. So we're going to go and fold this in and drop this off down at the yard uh, before we finish. And hopefully, by that point, all of our other equipment should also have finished then too. And I can uh, start looking at what we're going to be doing for the second day of May. In this corner here, I think, is where I stuck all of the stones last time. Uh, yes, we've got a pile of stones in the corner here. So, uh, yeah, let's get these unloaded into here. Then we can go and, uh, well, we'll then immediately get this returned because we're not going to be using this again next, this year. And we might not use it next year. Uh, the stones actually in the other fields are not that bad. Um, and the stones in this field, actually, there's only about a thousand liters of them. And that included small stones as well. So, yeah, not that bad at all. Uh, let's detach the rear one like that. Uh, we'll leave that there for now. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to return it because we don't need that. Uh, so, select and return. Yes. Perfect. Right. We, uh, we need to go and get this parked up with some fuel, I think. And then uh, looks like I'm going to have a little bit of cleaning up to do. Right that there. And refill that. Yes. Oh, no. Not that. Not that. I want to refill the New Holland. There we go. That is refilling with some more fuel. Uh, our other bits are going to be finished in a minute. We've got one of them blocked, um, but I'll go and sort that. Today, we are carefully maneuvering around because we're trying to get our cedar refilled with some seed and some uh, fertilizer because it is the final day of seeding here on Attingham Park. Uh, we have one field left to go. We've got ourselves into a position where we've got just field 2c left to do uh we've put the last few seeds into here and this is not going to take many seeds 
uh, of the Sorghum because this is a very good field. Um, it's probably going to be fairly heavy on the fertilizer, um, but I don't think that's going to be a huge problem. We're also going to take a long, uh, hard look at this cedar uh, going forwards and into next year. We might upgrade it to something else. Um, at the moment, it's a little bit of a problem to get it backwards and forwards. It doesn't quite detach properly and things like that. So, uh, yeah, we've uh, we've got it here and uh, we're, we're going to be using it, I think, uh for a little bit uh, well maybe not using it again next year i've got some alternatives that i'm looking at none of them are great for road transport uh, that's the only downside i've got let's get those off and then we'll see if we can fill this right up with fertilizer because this being uh, uh, just loam that we're going to be planting in means that we are going to have quite a uh, large amount of fertilizer used so just get the fertilizer in there and then we can set this off yep uh, and it being the last day we are gonna find as well that we we've got to roll the fields that we did last time so if we have a look in here quickly and have a look at what needs rolling so we'll take the stones off stones we're now clear on 2c of course after last time we don't have a huge amount of stones anywhere else um 2b actually has more than i'd expect uh mainly because it's got uh, lots of small stones that are roll and missed last time uh but on the farm in general we're clear of stones at this point uh what we do need to do is uh we've got to go and roll field six so we're going to get this started here over on 2c uh and once we've got this started uh what we can do is go and grab our roller and head over um with the uh i think we're probably gonna do it with the 8340 seeing as the 7810 is sitting uh on the weeder and then next time what we'll need to do is we'll need to get the uh we'll need to get the weeder through these two fields that we're doing today we're looking pretty good over the farm in general which is great news um, we do not have a huge amount of money. I'm hoping that this is not going to cost a lot for us today to run this tractor and get it uh, get it doing the seeding. Uh, we're going to try and get it to finish up on this corner here. So we'll bring this into here like so. We'll bring up course play. Uh, we click on the no course and it immediately sets everything up for us. Uh, multiple tools, number of headlands. I'm going to take that to four so it gives it more space to turn around. Start work on center. Uh, yep, up, down, angle, 90 degrees. Yes. So let's generate a course. And there we go. Finishing in this bottom corner where we are and starting up there. And you can see how much fertilizer we're going to have to have on here. So I think, yeah, we'll up this. Just driving across the field, it's giving me a rough idea. And it should be fairly flat across the field looking at this as well. So, yeah, a lot of fertilizer going to be going into this. So we're going to be doing a fair amount of back and forth. I've set it up to first waypoint. So we just line it up. Uh, we want to turn the variable seed rate off as well. So the activate variable seed rate is U and we are setting it to the low end of the seed rate because it doesn't need a large amount of seeds on here uh although he's saying it needs a medium amount of seeds on here which is interesting so if i up this let's turn it on uh, let's get it going and see what it does i'm i'm putting a low number of seeds on here but i think we might need to up the variable seed rate so let's do that so left shift and j up that oh right okay so this is what always confused me we've got a medium seed rate what we need is a low seed rate so the, the circles are how much we're actually doing the underline under it is how much um it needs uh, and uh, yeah, this field needs a low seed rate, so that's all good. Right, let's uh, do this then. And we're good on the variable seed rate and everything. First waypoint, and away you go. 
So with our cedar now going, we can turn our attention to field six and getting everything rolled. We actually left the roller down here. So I've got the 70, uh, the 8340. I keep trying to call it the 7840 um, down here. The 7840 is a tractor that I, uh, I used to drive myself. Uh, we got the rain today, but that shouldn't affect what we're trying to do. Looks like it doesn't want to hook up very easily, though. Here we go. That's, yeah, there we go. Hook all of that up. And then uh, we've just got this field to roll. And this is, field is always an interesting field to try and work. Um, because it has got a slightly weird angle to it. And a weird uh, setup over here as well. So I'm going to try and do it straight along this edge here. Uh, that should be 300 by the looks of it. Maybe not. We'll uh, we'll give it a try. See what happens. Uh, yeah, it never really matters exactly how I uh, seed these fields. It's just so long as uh, I keep the same angle when I'm rolling it. And this is 296, I think, is where I'm going to go. On second thoughts, with this straight edge here, it looks like 293 is, uh, is actually a better bet. So... Uh, I've come into that now. I think that uh, also, it's the best place to start is just the other side of those trees there, a little bit into the field. It makes up for the slight kink that uh, exists at that bottom end of the field. So it uh, works a bit better. Just trying to turn this as sharp as I can around this headland so that I can get back into here. And we want to be at 113 degrees on the way back. And hopefully, if we look behind, we're now not missing any either, which we're not. So, uh, yeah, we should be able to get this field done fairly easily now, especially with this tractor. Uh, this tractor is perfect for this job. And, uh, in fact, it's, well, it's got the same horsepower as all our other tractors on the farm. So, uh, it's, it's not a case of us having one tractor better for this than others. Other than the county, because the county just can't turn for pig manure. One other thing we are still keeping an eye on at the moment is the value of field 15. Now, at the moment, we, we still need to raise the money to buy it if we're going to try and buy it. We have got a fairly big contract sitting on uh, field 42, but it's a TEDing contract for, uh, for hay. And none of the really big fields are giving us lots of silage contract everything at the moment seems to be a uh, hay uh, baling contract which is not going to make us a lot of money uh field 25 seems to be pretty good and uh we have a uh we could get a decent amount of cash from that but it's not the level that is going to allow us to buy field 15. uh field 15's price has gone up um, and is currently sitting at, I think, around a hundred and, uh, I think we're sitting at around about a hundred and sixty thousand. Let's have a look here. Um, here we are. So yeah, Bill 15, just look at the size. This Bill 15 is bigger than our entire farm. Um, it would be a ridiculous field for us to purchase. Uh, it is currently 127,000. Uh, yeah, I don't have enough money for that, uh, which is just crazy. So, uh, yeah, we, we just don't have the cash to do it at the moment. And I don't think any of those contracts are going to let us. It has a crop of corn sitting in it. So, uh, yeah, it would be a massive harvest if we got it. I think it's not going to happen, though. I, I, I think we are just not going to be able to raise the cash in time. Uh, we shall see. It would take an amazing opportunity for us to actually do that. And who knows? One of those fields, they might decide that they want to have silage instead of uh, hay from it, uh, especially if we leave it. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, the rain has stopped and uh, it's nice and clear now. And I should say that we've got, yeah, two days and about 20 hours before that auction ends for uh, Field 15. 
Uh, it is still quite a, a big leap to try and get it. And I think actually with our current setup, as I said many times before, it would be almost impossible for us to do. We'd need a, at least a second combine, if not a bigger combine. Uh, and we would also need to uh, to have some bigger tractors, I think, to work it and some bigger equipment. Um, I, I think it's a little beyond what we have now, which is uh, not to say that it, it would be impossible for us to do. I think it would just be very, very difficult for us to do. So, um, yeah, we will we'll keep an eye on it. If we can do it, we'll do it. If we can't, uh, I think it would be a case of... Uh, going, oh, it's a pity, but we're going to move on. And we're going to continue our work uh, towards what we're aiming to do this year, which is uh, buy up the land this side of the river. At the moment, uh, we own uh, just field six. Uh, the idea is to try and buy seven, four, eight, nine, ten, and eleven and own everything sort of on this corner uh if we can get 14 and 13 as well and uh, and split those two that's basically what i'm aiming to do so there's quite a lot of stuff still to buy on here um we are on course to get a large chunk of it this year we have uh well based on last year's income and the fact that we have a lot more that we're hitting this year uh we should end up with a, uh, a a very very large pot to play with come the winter um unfortunately if we if we got field 15 we would end up with a larger pot uh, but uh, i don't think that's gonna happen one of those things which uh, if it happens it's gonna all be a little bit uh, amazing uh, but with only about a thousand pound in the pot thanks to our uh, our fishing uh, rental and fishing higher on the river uh we we got such a big hill to climb this end of this field gets really fiddly it's the uh angle that it comes in at is uh it's just a little bit annoying we are able to turn around in it without too much problems so uh i'm not having too much of an issue with it um but uh, yeah, it just gets, you do fewer and fewer rows. And as you do fewer rows, you end up getting more and more fiddly. Um, we are making very good progress though. We need to get this field and two C roll today. Otherwise uh, crops in both of them will germinate without being able to roll it any further. So uh, I, uh, I need to get both of these done today. That is not going to be a problem. I think the health of our tractor is fairly good. Yeah, health of our tractor actually is about the same as the health of the rollers. So that is all good. And it looks like our cedar actually is just uh, making very good time with its, uh, with the county on it. Um, despite the, uh, the, the county's uh, flaws. And that county, I think, is the tractor we're going to be changing first. This is our tractor that is worth the most money. Uh, there is nothing in the shop at the moment. Um, and I don't know if I have anything in my medium tractors uh, on these. Have we got a TW20, uh, TW35 in here? Um, we have a, uh, this Ford 8630 as well. That, uh, it, again, is a little bit older. Uh, has 130 horsepower. So uh, about the same horsepower as we've got everywhere else and that would possibly do. So we've got options in here. Uh, and then in the larger tractors, which is where we might be looking for this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, we've not got anything in there. So I think even the small tractors, there isn't much in here either. Yeah, we've got a few Fords in here. Uh, that's where our county is. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I might go looking for some slightly more modern uh, New Holland and uh, and see if we can uh, update a little bit something that's a bit more late 90s early 2000s uh, rather than uh, a lot of the stuff we have which is sort of late 80s early 90s uh, that we have on here at the moment and finally our cedar needs refilling and as expected it's the fertilizer it needs uh, it is on the headlands looking at this, which is great because it means I only need to put this bag of, or this remaining 87% uh, bag of double top in here. Let's open this up. 
There we go. And then we can come out here and refill this. Yeah, I think we've got plenty of seed still in here. It is just the fertilizer that needs filling up. And with that will be the last of the seeding we need to do for the ship. Yeah, all of that bag will go in. We'll go and put this tractor back up at the farm. First, close that up. And nearest waypoint. Start our engine. Up, oh, yeah, there we go. And then just back this up. You can see what line it's on, which is good. And go. And that has just brought it back by one and is still following the same line. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave that going and head back to our rolling. Last really fiddly bit in this corner. Just trying to get around here and get this. But they're going to pick the rollers up and take them back to the start of the field um, because we need to do two headlands with them. So let's uh, pick up our rollers here. And yeah, easiest way is to go back to the start. Otherwise, they end up, uh, we end up in this bottom corner and have to drive along here anyway. And at the moment, we've uh, we've not rolled all of this along here. So it, it makes sense for us to be able to go over it again. And down at the side here. And uh, actually, the place I probably want to start is, uh, is back that way a little bit. So what I'm going to do... So we've got some mist bits in the middle of the field here. Let's put our rollers down and uh, and we'll start going along here and then we can cut down the side there and have uh, this all nicely lined up for when we come back. Yep, this seems pretty good and we'll end up back this end of the field. I'm incredibly pleased with our progress on the farm this year. But we've only had one really late night where it came uh, came close to not have ever, everything done is amazing. Uh, that we have uh, this field rolled in, that we've got field 2C nearly planted, uh, nearly completely planted, means that we have every field now planted this year and uh, and potentially every field at its top spec we can. Um, except for the winter wheat, which, of course, uh, we've had the problem with the weeds on, uh, where we didn't know we needed the hoe in order to uh, to deal with the weeds on there. And, uh, and as a result, we do have a bit of a weed problem in two of those winter wheat fields. Uh, in those two winter wheat fields, because we only have two fields of winter wheat. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's not ideal, but otherwise... Everything is pretty much at the maximum we can get it with the equipment we have on here. And uh, I'm ecstatic about that. That is just absolutely wonderful for our progress here on Attingham. And I think we are we are going to have enough money to, uh, to expand the farm how I want to come the end of the year. Uh, which is huge. I mean, that is a, a massive bit of progress on here coming up to that point so uh we'll have to see how things go and whether we get any harvest uh, on those fields i mean we've got our again with the whole thing of we need to make sure that we sort our own farm first before taking on any contracts that's why at the moment i'm not taking on any contracts uh to drive try to buy field 15 um because we haven't finished our own work and until we finish our own work on the farm, uh, we can't go and do that. It's uh, Our farm comes first. It's going to make us more money than any contract will. And there we are. We have this field all nicely rolled. Let's just check it. And yep, yeah, there we go. Field six showing two tiny spots up there and a tiny spot in that corner but otherwise is very nicely rolled better than 2b is rolled um and so yeah we need to head over to 2c which is going to need rolling for the rest of the day uh while the county is uh, just finishing off its seeding had hoped the county would be finished by the time we got up here 
but it looks like it's still got one, maybe two rows to go. Yeah, in fact, it's almost done. It's got uh, two headlands to go. Is that a section is missed in the middle of the field, or is that just a... Uh... Yeah, that's a little bit odd. Is it planted? Uh, it would seem to be planted where I'm standing. Let's just uh, step away for a bit. Have another look. Yeah, it's planted, so uh, it must be to do with the uh, type of tillage and, and everything on here. We have had a little bit of a weirdness with that on this field. Uh, and it seems that, yeah. Oh, I know what this is. This is bits where we've not gone over it with the de-stoner. And so it's still uh, it's still got the stubble texture on it. That makes sense. So as the theatre gets started on its final headland, what I'm going to do is just follow it up here and then I'm going to get started from this top corner. Uh, that means I'll be able to turn around on the field and the cedar can uh, just get the last two rows done. So I'm just sort of matching its speed as it gets up to here. Uh, yeah, you can see exactly where I haven't gone over uh, with the stone picker um, because it's, it's just giving me that texture on here. We will end up with a unified texture on this field, so it'll be absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, it's weird. I thought I did do these headlands with the stone picker. Maybe I didn't. Um, it's certainly a, a little bit odd, but it is covering the whole field with this. We are getting to this field a little bit later in the afternoon than I would have liked. Um, but we should end up with a good amount of... Uh, well, we should end up with everything being rolled today. This is, uh, this is a much easier field to get our roll around. I drop myself down to fifth gear because we're not driving along the road uh, and we can turn our beacons off for that as well and then it's, it's going to be a nice finished job the only thing as I said that we still have left to do is to go and get uh, this all weeded once uh, it germinates and those these two fields are our last two that that needs doing just fixing an issue in the corner here and the high bid for field 15 currently is 187,000 I don't think that that is achievable at this point even if we did multiple contracts, I don't think we're going to get up to that level. Which is a pity because uh, I think that we uh, we would do well off field 15. Um, if it was if it was just after we'd sold all our crops this year, I think it would be possible. But as that price over the next two days sort of approaches 200,000, uh, I think it's going to be way out of the possibility for us to buy it. Our cedar has finished work and is now sitting behind my pillar in that bottom corner of the field. So uh, all we need to do now today is finish off rolling this. And uh, yeah, we're moving through it at a healthy speed. So I'm expecting to get through it. And then all of our seeding for this year on the farm will have been done and all of our fields will be planted. This field is so much simpler than field six. We are about three quarters of the way through it at this point and, uh, and making good progress. We'll have this done by the end of the day. And uh, as I said, that will be all of our fields nicely uh, done, nicely seeded. And all we've left to do is weed this field and uh, and field six and that's our farm ready for a couple of months in all honesty i think the winter wheat is going to come ready fairly soon uh, it is looking that way already if we have a quick look in here you can see that uh, 12b and 3 which are our two winter wheat fields uh, those both are getting towards the top end of the scale as far as readiness goes. Uh, the next one we're expecting is 2A, which is a uh, spring wheat field, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that's the spring wheat. Those are the two winter wheats. Uh, we've then got canola in 1, 2B and 12C. 
And uh, we've got fields 2C, 12A, and 6 as our uh, three fields of uh, sorghum. Uh, we also look at 7 and 14, both have wheat in them as well. And they are not looking quite as ready. No. So they're more, they're looking more like spring wheat fields as well. Field 10, whatever is in that, I think that's oats. Uh, yeah, that's a field of oats. That's looking fairly uh, fairly good as well. So, uh, yeah, 14 or 7 would both fit in very well with our setup and, uh, and fit into our rotation rather nicely. I don't know if I would possibly... 14, I think I'd certainly look to split because it's quite a big field for us. Uh, field 7, though, I think we'll probably take on as a single field itself uh, when we get to that point. Coming around up onto the headlands. Uh, looks like we're going to end in the bottom corner behind us. So it's, it's kind of worked out opposite to how I would like. Uh, I'll have to move the county on my way back. And oh, it doesn't like this hill very much, but it'll be fine. And uh, we'll come back down to this way. And yeah, we're going to end up probably in that bottom corner over there, I think. Uh, not the end of the world, although probably the, the corner I would least like to have ended up in. Um, but sometimes that is just how it goes. Uh, we should be able to turn around up here fairly easily, though. Finish off this side. And, yeah, we'll then head down the other corner and, uh, and get that done. So I actually ended up doing the outer part of this headland first. Uh, and then coming back along here uh, because with the uh, similar color to the field uh, I uh, I misinterpreted and went oh have I already rolled this and uh, or is this already good and unfortunately not so we can bring this down here although the advantage of this is that we've already covered this edge bit so I can li lift this up here and then we can just fold the whole thing up and the jobs are good and let's have a look on here and just double check that we are all rolled so that is over to here and yeah we've got a couple of little miss patches but nothing major and we're looking uh, in pretty good shape i'm uh, very very happy with this so uh there we are that is all of our fields seeded for this year uh all of them rolled as well uh, we've got a little bit of problem with weeds in a couple, but nothing massive. And uh, we are well on target. Just need to weed these two fields next time. Um, but this is where I'm going to leave it for today. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.